Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the stream. I'm Ian Douglas. I'm the author of the website, Tech Interview Guide. Normally, it would be up on the screen back here, but something's not working back there. And I'm kind of tired of debugging things, so um, that's not showing right now, but that's all right. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. Uh, happy Sunday. I haven't streamed in a long time. Uh, getting over COVID and the voice thing was <laughs> really, really bad. Um, but I'm feeling a whole lot better. Turn these lights down so they're not quite so bright. There we go. Um, yeah, hope you're doing good. Coding Garden fan, good to see you. Uh, I'm doing pretty good. Um, I did a whole bunch of thinking lately about, um, you know, what I'm doing as a streamer and uh, some, some things that I want to get into in 2023 and how that's going to affect the stream and things like that. So I thought I'd spend today and uh, just talk a little bit about kind of, um, I, got, I have some resumes that I, I absolutely need to go through today. Um, but I want to talk about some of the changes that I want to do for 2023 and how that's going to impact the stream and things like that. So, um, but yeah, I'm feeling a lot better, feeling quite a lot better. Uh, we had a handful of follows come in. Um, I haven't updated any of the, the, uh, the progress bar up here. So I'll be doing some of that during the stream today. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling a whole lot better. Absolutely feeling a lot better. Um, I'm still a little congested. Um, I just got up, you know, not too long ago, so I'm still a little sleepy. Um, I'm going to go grab a coffee, uh, stuff like that kind of as we go, but, uh, definitely want to, uh, definitely want to spend some time and get caught up with everyone and talk about, um, you know, some of these changes that I want to do and, and so on, uh, everything from rebuilding the website to doing more automation, um, and how we can figure out about doing resume reviews and, and things along those lines. Um, as well as, you know, how am I going to make money as a streamer um, to go into the diversity and tech fundraiser, all that kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah. But, uh, yeah, Coding Garden fan, how's, uh, how's your week been or last several weeks? Um, how have things been going for you? Um, absolutely happy to uh, take questions as we go today, as always. Um, I'm going to go grab a coffee here real quick. Um, but, uh, yeah, drop, uh, drop a high in chat. I'm just going to be... 30 seconds, go in the bake a coffee, I'll be right back. Got coffee. Um, so yeah, so for 2023, um, I'm, I'm still going to be streaming. I'm still going to be streaming Sundays and Thursdays. Um, but right now, I'm thinking that for 2023, I'm mostly going to focus the Sunday stream on interview prep. The Thursday stream is going to be a bit of a variety. Um, I've had a lot more people asking questions about 3D printing and the painting and stuff like that. Um, and so in 2023, I'm going to be using the Thursday night as a little bit of a variety, uh, kind of slot. And depending on how that goes, I may extend, uh, the, the, uh, like those alternate streams and maybe do a Tuesday night stream as well. Um, but a lot of that's going to depend on when I have mock interviews and things like that coming in. Having coffee is absolutely awesome for sure. Um, I saw a really great meme. that's like, you know, without the, uh, I can do or like I can't go without coffee because without coffee I can't do the words putting together thing. Um it was it was pretty funny meme, but yeah. Yay for coffee. Um but uh yeah, I want to do I want to do a lot more automation. I want to rebuild the whole website. Uh not so much as a rebrand, but um the website that I had right now for Tech Interview Guide is was 
the idea with that originally was to build it as a kind of an online book with chapters. And, you know, each of those chapters would cover topics. And there were topics I just never got around to writing, like negotiation skills and things like that. Um, there's a whole newsletter, uh, you know, series that I want to write up on preparation. I've got the content written, but I have to go through and edit it and format it and whatever to actually like publish that one and go live. I want to rebuild how people subscribe or resubscribe to the newsletters. Um, because a lot of a lot of the questions that I have on each of what is right now in chapter format in the online book is the um, like I've got a lot of videos on YouTube about that, and I want to embed those videos into the web page so that if people find the website, they can they can uh, you know quickly see like a you know a Q and A of me answering questions about those topics. And so I want to incorporate that a lot more into the site, and so probably break the site in like out of the sort of three categories that it's in right now with each of the chapters in those categories. And I want to kind of expand on the whole journey of, you know, the preparation, the research of, of a company, you know, what kind of projects to do, how to do the, um, uh, like the actual application of resumes, cover letters and things like that, and, and do all of that as the preparation. And then the whole like application interview and then, you know, post interview, like dealing with rejection um, and doing negotiations and things like that, because I've had a lot of videos made, um, but I haven't really gotten around to um, um, like actually incorporating those on the website. And so I feel like it's, it's kind of a missed opportunity for how to get that stuff um, sort of like published and, and, you know, put on there with a purpose. Um, because, yeah, I agree. The UI is okay, but it could be a lot better, especially on, on mobile devices. Um, people on mobile um, don't have a great UI experience right now on the, on the Tech Interview Guide website, and so I want to fix that. Um, and so a handful of things that I was just thinking about for 2023 that I wanted to get into are things like doing some coding and working on some projects and things like that. Like Work wants me to build uh, some IoT-enabled API-powered electronics and, and so on. I'm going to need to do some 3D printing and some design for that. Um, and that's one of my early 2023 sort of initiatives at work. Um, work is also going to be having me do a lot more. Uh, I'm basically going to be in charge of the, the live streams for Postman. Um, and so I need to kind of, you know, keep that on track and how I'm going to sort of uh, envision what their live stream is going to be about. And, um, and I also want to do more coding. Um, I've talked to folks at work and said, you know, I absolutely want to do more coding. Um, it's something that I, I really want to do. Um, and I'm probably going to do that on this channel as opposed to my Ian the Postmanot uh, live stream account. Um, and then do more streaming during the day as well. Now, all of that said, people kind of know me as being the interview prep guy. And so anytime I'm streaming, I'm happy to take a pause, answer questions about interview prep, do a resume review, all that kind of stuff. So that's that's the goal. Um, hey, Mark H. Uh, Postman is a company that I work at right now. Um, it's not not just an API client. It's actually like a whole API platform. You can build APIs and design APIs and test APIs and do security and uh, and all kinds of stuff with it. But that's that's the company where I work. Uh, the screen back here is just broken right now, um, and so it's not showing my tech interview guide banner. Um, but I'm thinking about changing, you know, the layout down here again over the holidays. And so this is why this is going to be the last stream for 2022. Um, just cause I've got some stuff that I want to do down here. I'm going to be changing up the lights again, probably. Um, I'm thinking about like rotating the desk and like facing this wall over here instead of this wall back here. Um, I want to like, I need more, I need more room down here. I'm trying to sell some stuff in my basement to like expand my my reach in the basement into this area like in this direction um the way that my basement is built right now this room is like a really long room it's like 30 feet long and then it goes to the stairs going upstairs um and and the area over here is just a whole bunch of storage racks that i that i built um and i want to like consolidate some of that stuff get it up to the garage hang some things in the garage to put stuff into and maybe get rid of one of those storage racks over here and push my whole area like out this way and have more workspace area for the 3d printers and so on um, and do more like insulation and soundproofing and things like that because uh, the family's starting to complain about the noise with all the 3d printers running and stuff like that so um, so i want to be mindful of, of those kinds of things 
um, and uh, and move the noise this direction as opposed to being over here um, because right above me is the kitchen and over there is like above that room over there where the kids usually hang out is uh, kind of like above that is kind of my wife's like quiet room den and like all you hear up there the 3d printers running um when like when i have all four of them running it gets it gets pretty noisy because we don't have any insulation or anything in the joists down here in the basement so i want to like get some soundproofing insulation get some soundproof tiles and things like that so um that's going to take time and, and effort and things like that so that's part of why i'm going to be changing up the stream a little bit maybe talk about um you know, how i'm going to be doing some of that work but um i'm too used to curl postman oh i'm too used to cur curl the postman ui looks awesome yeah it is um makari hey good to see you love to talk offline about contributing content for interviewing yeah i would love that that would be fantastic so um so some of the some of the things that i've been thinking about changing for the stream um so again sunday is going to be like interview prep and if i have guests on the stream it's going to be on sundays um, I know it's not going to be convenient for a lot of people because a lot of people want to spend weekends with their families and things like that. And so it's probably going to limit who I can have on the stream as a guest. But Sunday is going to be interview prep day. The Thursday stream, like I said, is going to be a little more on the variety side where I might do a little bit of 3D printing, a little bit of 3D design, a little bit of uh, like post-production on 3D printing. Like how do you sand 3D prints? How do you paint them? How do you, you know, uh, sort of, post-process a 3D print, things like that, uh, because I've had some questions about that. So I've already got new cameras and, and things like that that I want to kind of build out on this area of my desk um, and, and just talk about like what I do as, as sort of a 3D business as well. Um, and basically the whole idea is like about a year ago, I actually registered like a new iandouglas.com LLC um, and then like the live stream is going to be a division of that. The 3D printing is a division of that. And so all the money that I make is kind of going through the business channels. Um, and then mock interviews and resumes. I've signed up with a new platform that's allowing me to give you a URL of like, if you want to book my time for a mock interview or you want to book my time for a resume review, um, they're handling all the payment and things like that. Those interviews are not yet recorded. There are some some limitations on the platform over interviewing.io, um, but it's going to allow people to book my time specifically. So if you want to do a mock interview with me, or if you want me to do a private resume review, you'll have a way to book my time and actually make that happen. Um, and so I've got a, a calendar and, and stuff set up for that. Let me go see if I can find that website real quick, because I've got browsers open all over my computer. Um, and then talk a little bit about, uh, like I said, some of the 3D design that I've been kind of working on because I've got different ideas about um, like things that I want to build and things I want to do, um, partly for helping other people out as well. Um, is that browser window? Where did it go? Mm. No, that's also not it. Close that one down. I've got so many browser windows and stuff open all over my computer. That's not there. Not there. So many browser windows. There. So many virtual desktops and virtual windows and all the stuff opened up. It's on one of my virtual desktops where I've got this other website open up where I want to, uh, I can't find it. Can't find it easily or quickly. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so we're going to be changing up the website uh, for Tech Interview Guide. Again, like I said, I want to do more, uh, I want to do more work around having, um, having the YouTube videos on there. And also having more automation uh, about things and, and using the Discord community. So the Discord community is still only going to be interview prep. I'm not going to be doing like 3D printing and post-processing and stuff like that on there. Uh, but the, like I said, the Thursday night stream is going to be a little more variety. But whatever I'm doing on that Thursday, if folks drop by and they've got questions about interview prep and, and career advice and things like that, I'm absolutely going to pause what I'm doing and, and give that attention. Um, like I said, that's that's kind of how people are, are knowing me and understanding me, but I also want to grow the audience a little bit, hopefully to bring more awareness around like diversity in tech and, and 
and uh, things like that. So the Thursday night, I'll be doing coding. I'll be doing uh, like the API design for for this project at work. Um, all kinds of stuff. So the Thursday night's going to be kind of a mixed mash of of a whole bunch of things. But the Sunday stream is always going to be interview prep, uh, no matter what. Uh, Kilmer says, "Who has two jobs? I really recommend it. Uh, I mean, if you've got the time and the energy for it." Uh, more power to you. I'm not a big fan of the idea myself. One sec. Uh, what are you looking to plug in? Um, I don't know off the top of my head where they are. I'm using some of them for my lights and stuff that down here. Um, I can check in a little bit, but off the top of my head, if it's not on the rack right behind the filament here, if you don't see it on like the top two shelves, then I would have to go look for it. Yeah. We're uh, hanging up Christmas decorations. We're looking for some automation around that. So speaking of automation, so those are some of the other things that I want to do. Um, like if I find a good like Twitter thread on resumes or interview tips and things like that, I want to be able to scrape that and like post that in Discord. Um, so whether I make a Twitter bot or something where I can like forward the message to a Twitter bot and it shows up in our discord community or some way, like on a command line tool that I can say, like, you know, post this URL and it like goes and scrapes that data and puts it in, in the thread in, in discord, you know, things like that. Um, those are things that I would love to kind of automate. And so those are the kinds of things that I'm going to be building out on Thursday nights. Um, like some of the automation that I want to do around interview prep, um, and then helping people kind of get started with project ideas um, and mostly like rebuilding the site. Like I said, like rebuilding the, uh, the tech interview dot guide website and, um, and having some preparation around those things, um, continuing to expand out the playlists of videos. So if I have a bunch of written content and I don't have a video about it, uh, you know, I might do, you know, that might be part of a Sunday stream or a Thursday stream where I'm like recording short videos to put up on the, on the webpage around those kinds of things. Um, and so I'd love any feedback on the website, honestly, um, or the whole process of signing up for the newsletters or resubscribing to the newsletters, things like that. Like right now when you unsubscribe, it's like, hey, you're done. Um, and there's like, because I'm constantly adding content to those things, it would be nice if there was like a, Hey, Ian has added new content. If you want to resubscribe, like just a one click sort of resubscribe to that particular newsletter for you as a user. Um, you know, that would be, that would be kind of a handy thing to build. Um, so yeah, I've got a handful of like these kinds of automation projects that I want to do. And so I'm going to be building out a whole to-do list. Um, I might do like channel point redeems for like switching the topic of like what I'm working on. Like if people want to watch me code for a little while, or they've got a question about code, Again, this will be for like like the Thursday night streams, uh, not so much on the Sunday, but um, but like I said, Sunday is going to be very topical about interview prep and getting a job. Um, and and part of why I wanted to stream on Sundays is kind of a all right, let's get you ready for this coming week for finding a job. Like, what do you need? How can I help to sort of prepare you for your week? Um, do you need me to make introductions? You know, um, do you need uh, do you need help? understanding company research or how to do company research. Let's do those kinds of things on the Sunday stream. You want a resume review so that you're ready to apply for jobs on Monday. That's, that was kind of my whole vision for the Sunday stream to begin with. And so that's not going to change. Um, and so that's, that's primarily what my Sunday is going to be about is, is doing those things. And again, if you know, I, I still want guests on the stream. I think that's a, that's a very important part of what I do. Um, and that is not going to change the diversity in tech fundraiser. That is not going to change. That's still something I absolutely believe in. Um, and so the mock interviews and the resume reviews, all of that money is going to be going into the diversity in tech, uh, fundraiser. So, um, so yeah, so a handful of ideas that I have going on a lot more that I want to do around automation. Um, and then, um, you know, trying to find ways of, just engaging the community a little bit more uh, in that regard. So those are all those are all like it's a handful of ideas. So I'm going to be spending the next couple of weeks just putting together a to do list of these are the initiatives that I want to take on for 2023 and have those as sort of short term goals and long term goals and have you all hold me accountable to making sure we're meeting those goals and that I'm actually working on those things. Um, so that's that's where I want to get to. Um, I've asked for uh, like for a Christmas gift 
for example, there's like a little light set for the BD1 that makes his eyes light up. I want to put that into a Raspberry Pi, write an API for that so that make and make that like a channel point redeem for like 50, you know, channel points or whatever, like make his eyes blink or something like that. Or for a hundred, you know, channel points, like make the dark saber light up or something like that. I asked for a light kit for the, uh, for the TIE fighter as well. Um, and so I want to like build those kinds of little automation things. I think that kind of stuff is fun, but that'll be like a Thursday night, like go build that thing. That's, that's mostly what I want to do on the Thursday nights. Um, just show people how I do coding, show people how I do design, uh, writing out chat bots. Um, I've had other people ask for help writing like giveaway bots and things like that. So I want to help uh, folks with those kinds of initiatives and how I build those scripts and how I deploy those scripts and make them uh, available to other people, uh, things like that. So those are, those are some of the, the changes that we'll be doing for 2023. But primarily my goal for 2023 is rebuilding the website and getting the YouTube content on the website. Um, and vice versa, like in YouTube, like going through the YouTube descriptions and updating them to point to like, hey, if you want more information about this thing, here's this whole chapter like over on the website that you can go read um, and having more uh, having more content sort of link back and forth to one another. Um, and then, like I said, just doing more like soundproofing and stuff like that down here in the basement, uh, maybe moving things around a little bit. So the view is going to change a little bit as we go. Um, and that's OK. You know, changes, changes in inevitability. Um, I got Thanos in my mind of like, I'm inevitable. Um, change is inevitable. It's, it's just something that we need to deal with as engineers uh, in the tech industry. Like companies are always changing about what they do and how they do uh, stuff like that. So. Um, but yeah, I want to show uh, a couple things here. So I'm going to switch views. We're going to go um, take a look at our fundraiser goal and who we're giving that money to. Um, I want to update the, uh, I want to update our, uh, our income and all that kind of stuff and update this, uh, this progress bar up here at the top. And then, um, I'm just going to go ahead and because this is going to be the last stream for 2022, I'm just going to go ahead and give that money away to that group. Um, and we'll do that. Uh, we'll do that today as well. So, so let's, uh, let's dive in and, and, uh, see if I can get the browser source working over there for that one. And get the right browser pulled up here. There we are. Let me shrink this down a little bit so y'all can see what's going on. So this is my Twitch dashboard, and it shows the revenue that I've made since our last uh, fundraiser giveaway through today. So we got all the revenue coming in here, and now I need to go pull up an editor so I can go make those changes. All right, so let's pull up the Tech Interview Guide website. Um, so I use a, a I use a static site generator right now called Hugo, um, and the neat thing about Hugo is it's really easy to put together. Um, just a stream of twenty twenty two. It's really easy to put together some automations. Um, and like write out the web pages in Markdown um, and then just say like, go rebuild the site. And so I wanna do some automation about like, go scrape this dashboard that you see here, go scrape that data and put it in, in the, uh, the dashboard right away um, so that we can, uh, you know, just on a regular basis, it's gonna go through and rebuild things so it won't be this manual process here. Um, all right, so paid subs, we went from 120 bucks to 133.56. And then Prime subs, that also went up to 1901. Gifted subs, 7008. Um, multi month gifted subs, that went up to $4.86. Ads, only made like an extra 50 cents on ads because I don't run ads. Uh, cheering went up 100 bits, and that was it. Um, no new PayPal income or anything like that. Uh, no new private uh, resume reviews and so on. All right, so that's done. So let's go over to Terminal. And I can do Hugo and Firebase Deploy. All right, so that's gonna go rebuild the website and it's gonna go rebuild the financial transparency page. So once I reload this, we'll see 
we'll see these statistics kind of update. So we'll see the paid subs go from 119 to 133. And it's going to total all that up down here at the bottom with funding match, and then give us our total for the year, uh, for the second half of the year, and then we'll go get that donated. So that's rebuilding all that stuff right now, and then we'll uh, we'll get that looked at real quick here. Hey, Sarah, good to see you. Westry1. Uh, Westry1 is a really cool streamer as well. Does a lot of 3D printing. Uh, if you want to go give, uh, want to go give Sarah a follow. Uh, let's do a quick shout out for Westry1. Um, so some of the some of the changes again, just to kind of revamp. Uh, Sunday is going to be interview prep. Thursday is going to be more variety, where I might show like what I'm 3D designing, 3D printing, building. Um, all that kind of stuff. And then, um, you know, also post-processing of 3D printing. I've uh, been getting into more painting and showing the difference between dry sanding and wet sanding uh, for resin prints, as well as, um, you know, just some of the functional things I'm doing, like what the heck are these little sticks for? Um, you know, stuff like that. So that's going to be more of the Thursday stream. Um, but as always, like on the Thursday, whatever I'm doing, if people have questions about interview prep, uh, they will absolutely be able to... Uh, ask those questions kind of as we go uh, at any time and I'll always interrupt what I'm doing. All right, so we were at 577.59. If I reload this page now, we're at 597.69. So that's our fundraiser outcome for the year. So let's go back over here. Oops, wrong one. Let's go back over to this one here. There we are. Now let's go update that. Um, and we'll update that. So that was our progress. So we raised about 600 bucks in the second half and I'm gonna match that. So um, going back over to here, this is our total amount right here. And that's what we're gonna be donating. Oops. This is what we're gonna be donating to this group right here called Girls Dream Code. We're going to come over to their donation page and we're going to go make that happen. And yeah, we'll add a little bit to cover their fees. Maybe PayPal. And yes, I'm doing this live so you can all see that I actually do donate and match uh, what's going on. So I add my name and email. So I'll have Ian Douglas from uh, Tech. Guide. Um, email ian.douglas at techinterview.guide and my address. All right, they want my address, so I need to shut that off for one moment so I don't dox myself. Although anybody that's ever received a giveaway gift from me uh, is already going to know my address because I don't hide any of that on the shipping labels. Um, but let's do the donate now. Let's go back over here. All right, thanks for donating. All right, so the donation is done through PayPal. And let me go do one more check here. Looking for one? Uh, trash cans over here. It's over here. All right, let's go over to the inbox. All right, here it is. So I'm going to pull this down in here. So here's the verification. So here's the here's the PayPal email that just came in. And there's our donation. I just want to be careful about scrolling too far in case it has my my information in there. Oh, actually, it looks like it doesn't, but there it is. There we go. We did our donation for the second half of the year. So really appreciate everybody's help uh, with that fundraiser. Uh, again, in 2023, we're going to reset everything back to zero. But uh, yeah, good job, everybody. Thanks for making that happen. Um, like I said, this is a huge part of who I am and, and one of the things I strongly believe in, uh, you know, as far as... Uh, you know, being in the tech industry, diversity is very important to me. It's something I'm not going to be giving up on in 2023, but we're going to reset. 
we're going to like any new money coming in is going to basically reset for 2023 and we'll find a target. Um, but the other thing that I, that I realized is, is there's, there's a, an inherent trust thing of, you know, do I trust that if I give that money to Ian, that Ian's actually donating that money? Well, you just watch me do it. Um, and, and I did that on purpose live so that you can see that, you know, I really do give that money away plus I match. Um, but one of the things that I want to do in 2023 is when we, uh, when we as a community find a target of who we want to donate that money to, um, what I want to do is have, um, have like a link where you can directly donate to them because this, I mean, some people will look at this and go, well, Ian gets the tax write off from that donation. It's like, well, yeah, but you know, you all helped contribute to that. And so you can all feel good that that happened. But I do understand that some people want to be able to donate directly themselves so that you can have that tax write off if you're in the US or Canada. Um, and so I get that. And so one of the things that I also want to do for 2023, still any money I make as a streamer through ads and, and you know donations and all that, that's still going to go into a fundraiser. But when we identify this is who our target is going to be for the next you know quarter or six months or however often I split that up or if we do it for the whole calendar year, that... Um, that I share that link with all of you so that you can immediately donate to that group directly yourself. Um, and there are ways of doing that within Twitch where I can automate that progress bar a little bit more. Um, and so I want to find ways of like pulling all that stuff in together that if, if you all like donate bits or subscribe or whatever, that maybe something on my side automates a payment um, automatically so that, you know, a progress bar will, will increase or something like that. I don't know. We'll, we'll, like, again, these are, these are automation goals that I have and, and things that I want to build. And again, that'll be like a Thursday night stream of like, okay, how do I do that? How do I watch for those events happening? Um, so that when somebody cheers or donates or subscribes or gifts a sub that I can immediately turn around and like put that money in as a donation using a PayPal API or something like that, where I can donate directly to that fund and have a progress bar from Twitch automatically update. Um, things along those lines. So that's that's what I want to uh, that's what I want to get into uh, over the course of 2023. Is like how do we automate that, make that a little bit better, so that you can all, if you choose to, donate directly to those groups, um, and not worry about like oh, are we really funneling that money through Ian? Is Ian really giving that money away? You just watch me do it, because and that's why I built that whole financial transparency page. You can do exclamation point money, get the URL for that, and you can see. Here's how I make the money. Here's what we're, here's what we've raised. Here's what we gave away. Um, all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to grab a screenshot of that PayPal thing and I'm going to put that on the page as well. Um, I've wanted to put a screenshot of the, uh, of the one that we gave away to Hack the Hood in San Francisco and get that on the webpage as well of like, here's proof. Like here's screenshot proof that I actually gave them that money. Um, because we raised a lot of money for them back in, in June for, uh, for Hack the Hood. We raised a little over $5,000 for them. Um, and that was community raised money plus my match plus my employer match, um, all went into hack the hood. So, Hey, devil bird. Good to see you as well. Love your commitment to transparency and diversifying tech. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, I mean, part, part of the transparency is that I want people to be able to trust that if I say like, Hey, any money you donate to me, I'm giving away that I'm, I'm sincere about that. You know, I'm not just pocketing this money. Like I don't make money as a streamer. Uh, work bought me all of this equipment. You know, they bought me the camera, they bought me the lights, they bought me the microphone, like they bought me this stuff. Um, and so your your donations and whatever are not going into like buying all the lights and whatever, like work bought all this stuff. Um, and so, you know, the money that we're bringing in as a streamer, um, I want to do something with that and I want to make the tech industry better. Um, and that's partly why I stream. And, and uh, I mean, it's a big part of why I stream. So yeah, so Sunday is still going to be tech interview prep day. Um, and then Thursday is going to be like more of the variety of like, okay, let, how do we do that automation? How do we build out those kinds of tools? How do I, you know, make the little robot eyes blink and whatever with a channel point redeem? Like those kinds of fun little things. I also want to clean up this whole desk area behind me. It's kind of stacking up with like Christmas gifts and stuff like that too. Um, so that's partly why I want to like change up the studio a little bit. I want to get some insulation down here cause it's always freezing cold down here. Uh, my electricity bill jumped about 35% or something, uh, last month cause I had the space heater on down here a lot. Um, 
So yeah, so I want to get some insulation, soundproofing, and stuff like that. So that's also why this is going to be the last stream uh, for the year. Um, but on Thursdays, um, that's going to be more of the variety of like getting into doing those kinds of things. And if I'm tinkering with 3D printing and stuff like that, then I want to uh, um, I want to show off like here's what I'm designing, here's what I'm building, and so on. Um, so another thing that I've been working on. So this is a design that I came up with last night. Um, and I'm probably going to shorten these a little bit. They're, they're kind of long right now. They're about uh, 100, 100 millimeters long right now. I'll probably make those a little bit shorter. Um, but this is a little grooved design that I made. Um, if anybody follows Amish Ace on, here on Twitch, one of the things that Amish Ace does is he makes these Lego boards for people to subscribe, like people that subscribe to his channel. He makes them a little Lego lightsaber. And he puts them on these large Lego boards. And he wants a way to prop these things up. And so while I was on a stream last night, I'm like, hey, measure that board for me. So he got some measurements. And he's like, oh, I want it to tilt at like a slight angle. Um, and so I basically put this design together uh, where I'm like, okay, well, I'll just make this thing. And maybe I'll put like this little uh, dovetail sort of groove on it here that, you know, we can attach these two pieces together to make it twice as long. Um, but then I also put the dovetails in here so that he can stack them up side by side and he can have like a whole range of these things that he can prop these boards up. Um, but now that I'm thinking about it, he may not need the double length. This is probably going to be sturdy enough, just one by itself. Um, and if you change a whole bunch of them together, then the whole thing's not going to topple over and things like that. So, um, you know, this is the kind of stuff that I like tinkering with, um, you know, and so trying to figure out, okay, well, how do I build in the tolerances? Where am I going to need support material and things like that? So obviously going to need support material under this lip. Um, but, you know, how well are these tolerances going to work out? Like, did I leave enough tolerance between here and here like I made the the groove on this side uh like 0.1 millimeter bigger than like the actual dovetail itself which is really just a triangle wedge I mean that's all I designed in here was just this little triangle wedge to turn it into a dovetail joint um so you can come in here and you can say group all that together and then it kind of combines into uh into a single part um but like is you know did i build enough of that tolerance and so now i actually have to go print these um and see if it works and if it works then i'll print up a bunch of them and ship them to uh to amish ace um you know or send him the design because he really wants to get back into 3d printing as well um and he's like yeah this is one of the things that i want to do because he's also an engineer um and so you know i put this together while i was on a stream last night i might knock this down halfway um, this doesn't need to be that structurally sturdy. I mean, these things are just Lego boards. It's not like they weigh five pounds or 50 pounds for this thing to be like really structurally intact. But I do need the width of this for that dovetail joint. But maybe this front lip only needs to be like half as tall, or something like that. I don't know. So these are, these are things that I want to like get into and, and uh, you know, kind of tinker with. So, and again, that'll be like the Thursday night kind of variety uh, sort of base stuff. Well, Snable, good to see you as well. Thanks for dropping by. Your electricity bill is four times higher for November. Wow, same usage. That's wild. That is ridiculous. I mean, I was I was kind of in shock when my uh, when my bill went up as much as it did. Um, hey, Dota Two. I just noticed uh, Dota Two in chat. I haven't seen uh, Dota Two in a while. Um, and Devil Bird, good to see you. Thanks for uh, dropping by. Um, so yeah, sorry, I wasn't really paying attention to chat because I wanted to go through the and finish up that donation thing for the year and, and get that out. So, um, so yeah, so our donation, our fundraiser is done, we raised 600 bucks as a community, didn't quite hit our goal, but that's okay. Economic times, I get it. Um, but also I recognize too, that some people don't want to donate directly to me and then have me, you know, get the tax benefit and whatever of that. And so in 2023, when we find a target of like, this is who we're going to give our money to for the next three months or six months, or, you know, if we're going to do a whole year uh, fundraise and then just give them the money periodically. Uh, we can, we can chat about that as a, as a community, you know, how do we want to make that happen? Do we want to find one target and donate to them several times over the year? Do we want to find a new target every three months or every six months? Um, because I, I want to figure that out from a work point of view, because my work is also going to chip in money. Um, but when we identify a group and say, this is who we want to give that money to that I can give that URL out to all of you. So if you want to donate directly to them, you can. Um, but I would also love to track that as a progress indicator as well to say, this is money that we raised as a community. 
um, I think it's fine to, um, uh, to donate and things like that anonymously and, and just say like, Hey, like, I just want to donate to them, but I don't want like, you know, banners and I don't want my name showing up as a donation. I get that too. I've been in a situation where, um, in this year, uh, through giving money away at different kinds of events, like online things here on Twitch, people saw that I was donating. And I actually started getting DMs from people not asking, but demanding that I go to these other channels. Hey, so-and-so is doing a fundraiser for such and such. You need to go over there and donate. Like not even asking, like demanding that I go to someone else's channel or someone else's cause. I don't know them. I don't know what they're raising money for. I don't know what that cause is, but demanding that I show up there and donate money. So I started blocking those people, um, and they haven't been around my stream uh, since uh, that I've that I've noticed. But it's really discouraging when you want to help people out and you start getting people demanding that of you. And so for a big chunk of 2022, I started donating anonymously and and you know gifting subs anonymously and doing lots of bits, cheers, and stuff like that um, because people were noticing philanthropy and they're like, oh, you have money go give money to this cause or that cause. And, and so I kind of pulled back on that. And so I recognize that sometimes people want to donate themselves and they want to do it quietly and anonymously. And so I think for 2023, when we, again, when we find a target that we want to donate to, I'll make sure that you have a donation link immediately um, that you can go donate without, you know, all the hoopla and, and things like that. Because I, I do understand, you know, even even a donation of a dollar could be a stretch for some people and you know there doesn't need to be a lot of pomp and circumstance around all of that i get it um and so those are things that i want to also make available so again it's 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 it it all boils down to trust i mean the same reason that i you know i tell people like hey if you ever want to ask a question anonymously in the channel you can send a whisper over to the bot because i want people to feel safe about doing what they feel they need to do whether it's asking a question in the channel or you know getting some help or doing something like a donation um, i really want there to be a way for people to do things anonymously and quietly where their name isn't attached so um so i think you know th those are those are things that have been on my mind for 2023 it's like how can i make that stuff happen um how do we how do we uh like how do we automate that? Like how do we how do we turn that into chatbot commands and things like that? So again, that's going to be all the Thursday night stream, where the Sunday stream again is just going to be interview prep, resume reviews, um, all that kind of stuff. So any resumes that come in throughout the week, I'm going to review those on that Sunday. If I've got a guest, I might ask them to do the resume review with me, um, or the guest interview is going to be like a one hour long interview, and then we cut them off and say, okay, cool, you're done. Thanks for coming. Uh, let them go unless they want to stay and chat. Um, and then we'll get into resume reviews and like other questions and things like that. So when I do have people on the stream, um, that's only going to happen on Sundays now. And again, that is going to limit who can be on the stream because not everybody's going to be available on Sunday mornings. But uh, but I think that, you know, if, if I can really help people champion the idea of diversity in tech, I think the people that are going to care about that, they're going to, they're going to find ways of, of making that time available. So, um, but yeah, just looking back at chat, it, it was, it was pretty, uh, it was pretty bizarre. Thank you, Devil Bird, for the constant reminder to hydrate. I appreciate it. Although hydrating with coffee doesn't really count. Um, but, uh, um, oh, that was another disappointment this week. Uh, Hint water doesn't make the one liter bottles of watermelon flavor anymore. I was really disappointed about that, uh, which means I'm going to be going through twice as many of the smaller bottles. Um, and so I'm not a big fan of like having tons and tons of plastic waste, but I'm also unsure about the whole like PTG bottle or the, the PET bottle, like, you know, cut that into you know the strips and turn that into filament and, and whatever and that whole process it looks neat i see a lot of people doing that online and then using that as you know pet filament to actually 3d print with that kind of stuff looks neat um but i do have a water dispenser over here 
and I just need to be better about using that and like just maybe get like the little drop flavor stuff and just make my own hint water or something instead of subscribing to hint water. I don't know. We'll figure that out. I drink water out of a stainless bottle. Yeah, I mean, I've got huge water bottles. I mean, I've got mm-hmm. dozens of them from tech conferences. Like every tech conference you go to, you get like a water bottle or something. Um, but uh, yeah, so I've got I've got tons of water bottles. I just, I don't use them because I like the flavored water. Um, but I don't, I don't want to put flavored water in one of my containers. And now the container like always tastes like fruit punch, um, even if I want regular water. Um, so there's that, you know, like these, these tumblers, these only have coffee or tea. And so, if you know, if they mix up, that's, it's not a big deal. Um, but like, I'm not going to put cold water in here afterwards because that cold water is going to start tasting like coffee. And that's kind of gross. I like hint water, but not hint of coffee. <laughs> got to be real coffee it's got to be like full strength coffee not hint of coffee um yeah i know i'm probably just being a little too picky on that but anyway um trying to cut out soda tea coffee and water hopefully yeah um yeah i'm i'm still enjoying soda more than i should i definitely should just get into uh uh, just regular water. You can get water bottles with the insert. We actually have several of those double bird and, and they work, they generally work really well. We'll, we'll put frozen fruit in there. Um, so you get, you know, it helps keep things cold, uh, as well. Um, so those, those generally work really well. Um, but again, having that in a water bottle, then the water bottle starts to taste like that fruit. Even after you take that insert out, if you just want water, um, you're going to get that hint of that fruit flavor, uh, you know, over time, but we have a carbonation station thing. Yeah, we've got one of those too. I bought my wife one of those. It's the, um, is that the soda press or something like that? Uh, where it has like the little CO2 canister and you like hit the button or whatever and it like pumps CO2 into the thing to make it carbonated. We have one of those. Um, I don't like just carbonated water. It's got to have flavor if it's going to be carbonated. My wife though loves just soda water, which is why we bought the thing. Uh, the soda stream or something. Yeah, soda stream. Devil bird. Yeah, that's right. Um, but yeah, I bought her one of those years ago and we still use it. Actually, the original one broke. She bought another one that's electronic now where you just hit a button where it used to be like this little pump thing that you had to hit on the front of it. Um, but, uh, yeah, anyway, cool. So we got our donation done for the year. Happy about that. Um, thanks again to everybody that helped contribute to that with bits and subs and donations and so on over the last six months. Really appreciate that. Um, it means a lot to me to see a community come together and say, yeah, we also believe in diversity. We want to support this. We want to support, you know, the stream and and all that stuff. I appreciate that. So y'all just watch me match all of that uh, donation money as well. And that's something that I say I do. And I, I mean it, I backed it up. You watched me, you know, take that money, match it and donate that out. So, uh, so I'm, I'm happy that, uh, that we could do that today. So thank you for, uh, thank you for helping. Um, I've got one resume that I want to review. And then um, I still want to try to find that link to let people book time for like mock interviews and resume reviews. I've got it open in a tab somewhere on my computer, Um, but I've got like six virtual desktops and it's on one of those desktops. I don't remember which one. Um, I thought I had it open though. I could have swore I had it open in one of these other tabs on this virtual desktop where I do my streaming, but I guess I don't. Um, let's see what else is going on in chat. Dota says the problem is I drink a large volume of whatever I drink. Yeah, I mean, that could be a good problem too. Um, but having the water dispenser right here is really handy. Like I have a hot, cold water dispenser thing. I was going to get just a cold water dispenser and I'm like, well, sometimes it's nice to have hot water. I didn't want to have a kettle down here. Um, and so it's just got this you know, it's got the big tank where it like preheats the water and whatever. It's great for making like the little cup of soups um, or tea. Uh, I use it a lot for tea. And then I have just a little single serving Keurig uh, kind of thing where you pour in like eight ounces of water and hit a button and it makes a single cup of coffee. Um, and so if I want like hot coffee or if I make a mocha or something like that, because these things will hold two of those servings. And so I'll do one of coffee and one of a hot chocolate and you get a mocha. And then I have decaf pods for the evening. So I'm not like wired and like wide awake all night long um but uh yeah so anyway so you know over the last couple of days uh printed out some more fidget cubes for people that wanted fidget cubes um the kids uh 3d printing thing that we did at the school uh last like not yesterday but a week ago yesterday 
on Saturday, um, we raised, we got about $200 in cash. Um, and we raised probably another two or $250 or so, um, that we then split with the school. So the school keeps a portion of that, but anything that we got paid as cash, we get to keep all that cash, but otherwise they give, uh, they sell these little tokens. When you walk in, it's like 25 cents a token. So you give them 20 bucks and they give you what 40 tokens or, or 80 tokens. And then you go around to all these different booths and you spend the tokens on things. So you want a piece of banana bread, that's 10 tokens or 20 tokens or whatever. And then the tokens we split 50, 50 with the school. And so the kids, uh, you know, they, they come up with some ideas. So the little catapult kit that we gave away in October, uh, my oldest kid put together a table where we assembled some of those catapults and you had to launch something into cups. And if you got into different size cups, you won different 3D printed prizes, like, you know, a little Minecraft creeper or a fidget cube or, you know, whatever. And that was a huge hit. Um, and then my youngest, um, he helped 3D print some little keychains that you can write your name on. Um, and that was also a big hit. And so combined, they took in like hundreds and hundreds of these tokens, but we split that with the school. So they keep half of the value of those tokens. And we're going to get a check for, you know, whatever the remainder amount is at some point. Um, so it was, it was really cool to, uh, to see that. And so we came home from that and then we started getting orders from people and like, Hey, can we get one of those dragons? Can we get one of those, you know, flexible axolotls? Um, let me go grab one of those real quick. You know me, I love, I love showing this kind of stuff off. So um, you're all familiar with the Imperial Dragon. So these are the dragons that we give away back in May. This guy's actually got a giant thread hanging off his head here. Need to hit it with a heat gun. Um, so yeah, the dragon was a big, big hit. Everybody loved the dragons. Um, so we had a lot of orders come in after the fact for the Imperial Dragon. Um, and I subscribed to... Uh, Flexi Factory's Patreon, which then gives me a license to to sell th their designs, um, and so that was a big hit. The other big hit was a flexible axolotl, and so um, and then we had an order come in uh, just the other day, going, "We want one in rainbow colors. So can we get one in like red and yellow and purple and blue and things like that?" This guy lost a little bit of fringe on the bottom. I started printing them without support material, and then I went back and I added support material. So um, lots of fun colors. This is a, an interesting color that I got. Um, I think it was, I think it was Polymaker actually. And it's, it's called Watermelon. And it's this really cool, like peachy pink uh, sort of color. It's really neat. Uh, so we printed those up in a bunch of colors. And then uh, there's the support material that I added that I got to clean up um, for that guy. Um, but then you've all seen this one. I think, uh, I think, um, Subsector 3D just showed off the uh, the Flexi uh, Phoenix. And one of the things that I mentioned on her stream is like, have you seen the base that they make for those? Um, they have one with, uh, you know, fire coming out of it and then one with a crystal. And then it's got like just little spaces where the feet actually fit in there. And so, you know, the, the little guy like sits in, in, the, in the little base. And so I started printing those on the bamboo because they do multicolor really, really, really well. Um, and so we had, we had some of those that we gave away at the show and, uh, and people were like, oh my gosh, can we get one of those, uh, with, so this is the one with fire and I've got a transition filament in there. So it's just uh, polyterra charcoal, uh, black. And then this is an amylon, uh, blue teal filament. And again, it's just got the little feet cut out here for where the feet of the, the flexolotl or the flexi Phoenix, uh, sits into. And so that's the one with the fire. And we did some of them with the, with the red gold that I did the, the dragon in for the fire. And it looked, looked, it looked fire. Um, it looked lit, all the, all the fun terms. Um, and then we had someone else uh, really compliment the three color blend that I love, that charcoal rust gold. 
um, and they wanted uh, just teal crystals. And so it's just Polymaker Teal. And then this is the Amelin three color blend. Um, it's like a shiny black rust gold uh, tri blend. And again, just with a with the uh, sort of cutouts there for the feet for the uh, for the Phoenix to sit in. And so it looks really neat. Like you get the you get the feet lined up and they sit in there really well. And so this was a huge hit at the show, you know, being able to show these things off like that. And so we had a lot of orders for these come in. Um, and so, like I said, we, we raised about $200 there. And then we've raised probably another $50, $75 since then. Um, just with people like, hey, can we get more of those fidget cubes? Can we get more of the flexible axolotls? Can we get more of this or that? Um, so it was a lot of fun just watching my oldest kid who was in charge of that table, uh, you know, with the, with the catapult thing. That's where a lot of these orders have been coming back in from. And just watching him process and like, how does he build out a spreadsheet? How does he keep track of which ones are done printing? How does he keep track of which ones he's actually delivered? Who does he deliver it to? Are they coming to the house? Do we have to meet them somewhere uh, for that sort of thing? Um, I took the Superman and the Spider Gwen to the show and showed those off to people. And people were like, oh my gosh, you can print big things like that on a printer. It's like, well, it's all pieces and you glue them together. And I showed them gloop. Um, Spider Gwen was a big hit um superman i gave away to my my friend it was for a, a friend i met him uh, friday night and gave him that and he was like in awe that you know he's got this giant you know superman statue now so um so yeah those are those are all pretty uh, pretty fun things um go to two says i should buy a 3d printer and start a business i mean a lot of people have i mean you can you can make some money on it for sure the um that was that was part of why i bought the bamboos is to start getting into like the multicolor prints and being able to sell this kind of stuff. Being able to price this stuff gets a little bit trickier because it takes a lot longer to print multi-material stuff. And then you end up with a lot of waste. And so one of the things that I was doing with the waste is I was melting it down into these nuggets, pouring the nuggets into uh, like a, a resin mold and then pouring resin in there. Um, I forget it. I forget, maybe remind me in chat whether I showed off these pictures or not. Uh, in the past, but I can show off some of the uh, some of what I did there. Let me go find those pictures and I'll share them. There it is. So what I did is I, I bought a sandwich maker and I started melting the so when when you print on the bamboo, it makes these little coils of filament. Um, and then I started melting them down into um, into these big piles and then like gradually flattening that down. And so, you know, the lid on the thing is also heated. And so I put a, a sheet of this Teflon baking stuff on each, each, uh, like the top and bottom half. And then, um, basically getting them down into, uh, you know, really, really flat, cut them into strips, cut those strips into nuggets, and then pouring those nuggets into these skull molds and then you end up with these really cool like Dia de la Morte uh, sorts of things. And so the Spider Gwen made a lot of red or sort of pink, white, and black um, and, and a little bit of blue, uh, a lot of filament waste. And so you can see a lot of those colors in here. And then I basically just mixed up some resin with a little bit of mica powder. Uh, in this case, it was kind of a green mica powder. And so you get all this green, you know, sort of fill in around those little nuggets. Um, and these, these little skulls were a big hit at, uh, at the school. It's like, Hey, we can take all that waste material and we can repurpose that for other things. And so part of pricing out these 3d prints is going to be like, what do we do with the waste? You know, if you want something like this, that's fine. But you know, do I charge people for the extra time of processing that waste material in some way as well? Um, and add that as, as part of the price. I don't know yet. Need to figure that out. Um, but the print quality comes out really great on the bamboo. Um, but these were still printed on my Prusas. So, you know, it's, it's really the filament on, on these that makes these shine. Um, the flexible axolotls, these were both a mix of the bamboo and the Mark III uh, as far as the, the print quality goes. Um, this is like a 0.1 layer height, you know, so you barely see the layers. Um, and then on doing them on the Mark III, um, I think I did this blue one on the Mark III. I did this one of like 0.15. And so the print quality is not quite as nice, but it still looks still looks pretty pretty decent. So, all right, Kim Wife, thanks for the 300 bits. Appreciate that. 
So all the bits and, and subs and things like that were generally going into this diversity and tech fundraiser, but we actually just donated that money. Uh, but thanks for coming by. Uh, Rike and Wife was also uh, a recipient on uh, Amish Ace's channel where I was 3D printing these lightsabers. Um, and so Rike and Wife got one of these, uh, these lightsabers here in the middle. So this is a, um, a model of the Ray lightsaber. I actually glued these parts in incorrectly in the, in the wrong order. Um, after the handle, it was supposed to be more of this portion and then go back into this and then the cap on the end. Um, but these were all done on the, on the bamboo, um, on the, on this one, I just went in and I painted the buttons on this one. It was way faster <laughs> to print in a single color and then just go back and like put a couple of dots of paint on there. Um, but all the rest of these were all done in, uh, in multiple colors. This one was really complex to try to build as far as like the, the titan the, the burnt titanium filament that someone here on this channel actually recommended. And then just a bright silver uh, sort of filament. And then the blades are collapsible uh, to go inside. And so I made a ton of those. And then, uh, yeah, I was giving them away on Amish Ace's channel. So I was trying to grab a screenshot of where he was like, oh, look at the, look at the lightsaber. And so I ended up doing this one where he's kind of like, whoa, what? Those um, lightsabers are awesome. <laughs> thanks. Appreciate it. Uh, thanks again. Yeah, the lightsabers are, are really fantastic. Um, Westry, thanks for the uh, thanks for the resub for two months. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, the the lightsabers came out really really great. But one of the things that I did is I actually printed one in resin, and then I hand painted it. And so this is one that I hand painted. Um, and so I used like different shades of brown and and tan colors and whatever, and kind of like speckling it on the handle so it kind of gets a texture to it that's not just smooth paint. Um, because this whole thing was kind of this this interesting sort of gray color uh, that you can see down here at the very bottom. So this is the actual color of the resin. And then, you know, I painted this part blue, but like going through and like, how do you sand this? Um, you know, and how do you then go in and like paint the little screw head and things like that? But this was, this was my, my paint job to actually, uh, you know, make this look like leather. And then how do I paint all these things in different colors and things like that and put that together? Um, and so that was kind of the first take on it. You know, and trying to come up with, uh, you know, trying to get in there with little tiny paint brushes and try to paint all this stuff. It wasn't super neat and, and clean, but it worked decently well. Um, but that was the Ray, um, that was the Ray lightsaber. And then I got into printing these uh, these koozies. It's like a thing that you put a can of soda or beer or whatever into and it keeps it insulated. Uh, so I was 3D printing those for Amish Ace's uh, channel for him as well printed those off in different colors. And again, it's really interesting to see when you do like a gyroid infill and with a translucent filament, you, you can kind of see the, the, uh, the shape of the infill material coming through the side. Um, and so I printed off a bunch of those. And then uh, this was the axolotl that we were doing in multiple colors. So we did them with kind of a blue fringe and we had a purple fringe as well. And so these were these were things that people were, were asking us for after the, uh, after the show last weekend. So just going in and doing some of that. And then I printed more of the lightsabers. And then I went back to this lightsaber and I added some aging uh, to it. Like what if it got scuffed up a little bit? What if, uh, you know, what if it got dropped on the floor, you know? And so like some of the blemishes from a resin print, you can kind of like kind of paint back over and, and make it look aged and worn and things like that. So like adding some of these kinds of markers in here to make it look like aged and worn and bumped and bruised and things like that. Like what if the metal got scraped? Um, so yeah, so that was fun. And then I put a glow in the dark, uh, uh, blade in there as well. Um, so these were, these were the last, uh, lightsabers that I made And this one here on the left with the glow in the dark green blade that actually went to a ride can wife who's, uh, in chat right now. So that one's on, on, on its way to Washington uh, for them. And uh, hopefully it'll be on Monday or Tuesday. And then this is, this is just an event that I spoke at. Uh, got everything printed up and then, yeah, that was pretty much it. And then all the, all the leftover stuff that we had uh, from, the, from the show, I basically took to this event that I spoke at Thursday night. We had all these Fortnite keychains and Roblox keychains and Minecraft creepers. Uh, these keychains were the Yellow Ribbon campaign, um, if anyone here was part of Loyal Moses' channel. Um, and uh, I forget who the designer was. 
Um, but they they had made these uh, they designed these little keychains for the yellow ribbon campaign to raise awareness about suicide prevention. We had a lot of those left over, um, and so I gave those away. Basically, we were giving them away at the school. Like you don't you did, like nobody had to pay money for them. We're just like you know if you come by our table, you're welcome to take one of these keychains. Um, and they had they have, you know really good motivational meetings on them, and so people love free stuff. And so they'd come by and they'd take free stuff and they're like, oh, look at the gingerbread men and look at, you know, this or that and made these little CU uh, buff. Um, it's the uh, the local university here in Boulder. Um, it's their uh, their football team logo. So I made some of those in multi-material. But these cups were also a big hit as well. Um, so, you know, people are like, hey, I don't want a keychain, but can I take one of these cups afterwards? I'm like, yeah, that's fine. Um, so that was, that was fun to uh, to go through and do some of that um Lester says i want to print one of those once i have a printer running yeah it's having having a working printer is uh is pretty nice for sure um all of the uh the nano leaf panels behind me they all got reset uh when we had a power outage now it keeps wanting to go to 100 percent power all the time and it's kind of annoying um uh, sorry for the uh giant bright colors behind me here like every time i change the scene it goes back to 100 percent. it won't stay at like 30 percent Kind of annoying. So I want to like go through and like do some of those things. Anyway. Um, but yeah, thanks for the resub. Thanks for the bits. Appreciate those. Um, so yeah, I need to figure out now how we're going to reset everything for 2023 as far as like the fundraisers and, and stuff like that. So again, those are the things that I want to be doing on the Thursday streams. Um, and I may stream during the day um, since, since work is going to allow me to write code for uh, some of the automation stuff that I'm going to be building, this big project that I'm going to be taking on. Um, I won't give away a lot of details, but if you're a fan of the original Toy Story movie, um, that's going to be something that I'm going to be building for work. Uh, comes from the Toy Story movie. Um, and it's going to be API powered, so people will be able to kind of interact while they're on a live stream. They'll be able to interact with this machine that I'm going to be building. So I've got to design out all the parts, um, and there's going to be 3D printing involved, and there's going to be a lot of coding and uh, sort of specking of parts and actually building that equipment and that's part of what I want to live stream as well um, because it's it's a project that work wants me to build and so I'll actually get to do that during the daytime uh, which will be a lot of fun so uh, aside from doing like regular API work and dealing with kind of our partners and, and, and companies and things like that for the live stream that we that we do on Thursdays at work I'm going to be live streaming building this piece of equipment um, and so, you know, that's going to be the whole workbench kind of area right here. But I also need more workbench space just in general. So again, that's why I want to like move a bunch of stuff on the on this side of where I sit right now and like maybe rearrange things a little bit. Um, so that's that all played into like, I'm going to need to change things up for 2023. Um, like I've got a lot of these light panels, but you only see really this one and a half strip of these lights, but I've actually got Four levels of those lights like going up the whole wall but you can't see them um, so I want to like rearrange those lights I want to rearrange everything on the desk here behind me um, you know whether I have still have the Lego there or not I don't know um, so yeah I want to tinker around with a lot of that stuff I would love to automate things on the TV here like if somebody subscribes it actually like pulls up your face or something on the TV back here like those are the kinds of things that I would love to sort of automate and build out um, and so again, that's going to be the Thursday night stream. So I'm going to, I'm gonna basically going to build a to-do list for myself. I may actually make a, uh, uh, like a GitHub repository where people can go in and like add an issue, um, uh, to say like, Hey, what if you did this? And then I can prioritize like where that would go. Um, I think that kind of stuff would be fun. And then I also want to open source, uh, a little bit more about the tech interview guide website about, um, how I sort of build out the structure of that and have the YouTube videos linked to it. Um, one of the things that I would love to do is maybe is say, have, have like a, we call it meta programming where we can sort of design out like this page is going to include this markdown, this YouTube video, this page is going to include this markdown, this YouTube video, and then pass all of that off to the Hugo site generator to actually do the, uh, the site generation. Uh, Riking Games, thanks for the follow. Appreciate that. Give you give you some blinky lights here in the background. Uh, so appreciate the uh, the follow. Um, so like those kinds of automations were fun. Like when somebody follows, I can make the lights blink and and things like that. Uh, I don't know whether the audio worked. It should have 
done some kind of audio prompt as well. I don't know whether that played or not, but, um, but yeah, those are the, those are the fun kinds of things that I want to, uh, design out and, and do more of, and that's going to be the Thursday night stream where the Sunday is always going to be interview prep. So, um, let's see what else going about an hour. I do have one resume to review, uh, today, and then we'll, uh, we'll probably wrap up from there maybe, but we'll see. Um, so yes, we got our donation in for the year. Super pumped about that. Um, so again, the, uh, the donation for the year, we raised about $600 here. I matched that money. Um, and then I bumped up a tiny little bit, uh, to cover the PayPal, uh, cost to them because they lose like two or 3%. So we added a little bit of extra money on that. Um, but, uh, basically we did our donation to girls dream code. Um, they're based in, is it Minnesota or Wisconsin? I think it was Minnesota. Um, I forget now where they were based. I think it was Minnesota. Um, yeah, Minnesota. So that donation's done. Um, let me pop this in chat as well. If you want to make your own donation directly to them, absolutely welcome to. So again, this is something that I want to do in 2023. Anytime we come up with a target, okay, let me just drop their whole website in, uh, in chat here as well. If you want to go through their donation page. Um, but this is the kind of stuff that I want to be able to go through. I want to go through ProPublica. I want to find these organizations. And then when I find an organization that I think is, is worth donating to because their primary mission is increasing diversity in tech, then I'll make sure that those get added to like a bank donate, you know, sort of command or something like that, that when you do that command, it'll show you the link to the website. Like this is who we're raising money for. If you want to donate directly to them, you'll be able to. Um, I've tried to be pretty transparent about that in the past. Uh, around like this, you know, here's, you know, here's the group that I've identified this last half though. It took a while because going through the research for these companies, I actually found a bunch of companies that were raising money, but not using the money in responsible ways. Like they were raising like 800,000 to a million dollars or this one group raised about $800,000, but more than two thirds of that went to pay the salaries of the people in the organization, which meant of, of that $800,000, only about $150,000 actually went to diversity in tech. The rest of it went to paying the people to run the business. And that's, that's where I was like, man, that's not a great use of, of the money. Um, so yeah. Um, Pulse Naval, work-related question. Absolutely. I had a bi-weekly ask me anything with my younger colleagues. I had a hunch they were under pressure, but it was worse than expected. So I'm open for ideas on how I can help them. They did take a few actions at once, but looking for your input. Um, I guess it would depend a little bit on uh, like what, what is, like where is that pressure coming from and what is the pressure? If the pressure is coming from management and the pressure is we need to do more work in less time, then it's an efficiency issue. How do you make people more efficient to get more done in less time? Um, and that can be showing them shortcuts and optimizations or um, how to not cut corners, but, you know, as a senior dev, we make trade-offs all the time of, you know, if I do it this way, we're going to like maybe increase some technical debt and that's going to like come down and bite us in the end, you know, down, down here at this point or that point. Um, and so understanding those, those sorts of dynamics within the, within the company uh, can make a difference. Um, but if the, if the pressure is like, oh, we've just got, we've got this project and we need to finish the project, then again, it's, it's kind of a time and effort sort of thing. And I think being able to safely push back on the product team and say, Hey, of all these features that you want, we can get these ones done on time, but these ones we're going to have to do later. And having, having the, uh, the more junior people on your team, not just the juniors, but like the people who are you know, uh, don't have your level of seniority, have them in that, in that meeting as well. And just say like, Hey, they're just here to observe, you know, what it's like to have a meeting where we push back on product and say, we can't do all of these features. Um, so the pressure is coming from the product team to ship key features before Christmas. Okay. The problem is the product team isn't open for reducing scope. I mean, they need to be, um, if they want more features, it's kind of a, it's a, it's kind of a personnel problem at that point, but you can't just throw more people at the problem and expect the problem to get solved. There needs to be an awareness with the product team of like, you know, even if we ship all these 
things by Christmas, who's going to support it? What if something crashes? Like, do we really want people working over the holidays to fix problems if things crash? Like, why not do like a code freeze a week before Christmas so that we're not worried about deploying things and fixing bugs over the holidays? Um, people shouldn't be interrupted over the holiday time like that. Like holiday time is family time and people are going to be out and people want to take vacations and things like that. Uh, there needs to be healthy pushback on that kind of stuff. Hey, Eric Garcia in chat. We've had Eric on the, uh, on the stream in the past. Um, so we'll talk about, uh, that question here in a sec. Um, <clears throat> so the product, the product team isn't open for reducing scope and put pressure on the younger coworkers. Um, again, I think it, it's, it's a, it's a conversation that needs to happen. They put these young people in very unfair and stressful situations. Yeah. And that's a, that's a business problem. You as a, as a more senior dev, um, you know, with experience in the industry, you need to be able to push back and say, we can't, like, there's not enough time to get all this stuff done. We've only got a week of work left before Christmas happens. We can't burn people out right before the holidays. And even if we do deploy all this stuff, what if something breaks? You're putting so much pressure on them that something is going to break. And now we've, we've got to spend the holiday season fixing bugs. That's not great for anybody. You know, the, I, I guarantee the product team is taking holiday time. So why not let the engineering team take holiday time as well? Why not call a code freeze by Wednesday and say, if it's not done by Wednesday, it's not being deployed. We need some time to like get these features out, make sure they're bug free. I mean, hopefully your team is at least doing testing and so on to, uh, you know, alleviate as many potential bugs as, pro as possible. Not always going to be possible, but, um, but these are the, these are the kinds of things that are, are really important to show uh, healthy pushback and having those conversations. And I think having them be part of the meeting where you show them, okay, this is how I'm going to approach this. Maybe have a pre-meeting with them and say, let's talk about which features we absolutely can get done and cannot get done by Wednesday afternoon because we're going to do a code freeze. Thursday and Friday is just making sure everything is running smoothly. Maybe we'll work on like some additional work, but we're not deploying that work until after Christmas. Um, have a meeting with your team and then call a, call a meeting with product and say, we have to do a code freeze by Wednesday. Uh, we can't deploy anything Thursday or Friday because it's the holidays. Like people want to take time. We need to make sure that things are smooth and bug free and things like that. Um, they have to, they have to pay attention to this. Like you can't burn people out right before a holiday and you can't expect them to work over a holiday. Like that's, it's a horrible way to run a business. It's a horrible way to operate uh, your staff. Now, are you going to change their minds? Maybe not, but being able to speak up at least, I think is an important part of being a senior level dev and showing the rest of the team by example, like here's how we have these healthy discussions. Even if the outcome isn't what we want, you're still showing them that you're willing to stand up for them and advocate for them. And that's gonna you know, kind of pay you back as, as far as respect and, and gratitude and things like that. Um, it, it's gonna, it's gonna show a lot of growth on the team just from a from a cohesive you know work together as a team point of view because people are going to understand that if they come to you with problems you're going to act on that that's a big part of being a leader as well uh, on the on the technical side so like a lot of other answers that i give on the stream it comes down to communication it starts with you and your team okay these are the things they want us to get done what what can we actually get done like let's realistically sit down and evaluate what can we actually get done before the holidays like if we had to cut everything off by wednesday night what's the absolute most that we could get finished and you know keep the pressure on them you don't want them to go oh we're only going to work until wednesday cool and then watch them relax keep the pressure on but say i'm going to tell the product team that we want to do a code freeze wednesday night what can we tell them we can absolutely finish by Wednesday night? So that when you walk into the, into the meeting with the product team, you're not just saying like, hey, we're not working after Wednesday. But you want to say like, hey, we want to deploy all this stuff Wednesday night, spend Thursday and Friday making sure it's stable so that we can enjoy the holiday like everyone else in the company. And we're not burning people out. If people need to be on call, then people are on call. That's fine. But you know, these are the features that we are absolutely committing to finish, but these other features we cannot get done in time. And just say, like, 
there are not enough hours in the day to make sure all of this stuff is properly tested, properly deployed, 100% bug free, because nobody wants to, you know, have these problems over the holidays. Nobody wants to be on call. Like, let us have a holiday, you know, um, however long that holiday period is going to be. But I think, I think that's, it's some pushback that needs to happen for sure. Um, I did talk to the manager directly after the meeting and the CTO, basically saying, if we don't create a healthy environment for these people, they're going to quit. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the, that's what exactly what's going to happen. And so I think have like sitting down with your team, like first thing tomorrow, uh, which, you know, I understand because of the time difference isn't going to be that, that far away for you, fool Snable. Um, but being able to sit down with your team and say, okay, if we, if, you know, here's the list of all the features they want done by the end of the week. What can we absolutely tell them? Like we can get this stuff done by Wednesday night. Not that we're not working Thursday, Friday, like we're still going to work Thursday, Friday, but Thursday, Friday is going to be more like maintenance and, you know, observing like are things actually stable? Is this stuff actually working okay so that we can enjoy a couple of days of holiday time uh, without everybody being frantic and burnt out and, and so on? Um, and just say, if I were to sit down with the product team and say, this is what we can commit to absolutely getting done by Wednesday night, see what happens. The worst they'll say is, no, we still need all this stuff done. But at least then your team knows that you're willing to advocate for them and you're willing to call a meeting and advocate for them. Um, I think it'll, it'll show a lot of, a lot of growth and, and health within the team, especially for them to be in the meeting with the product team as well, to show them what it's like to interact with a product team and say, okay, so-and-so is in charge of this feature. They're going to get it done by Tuesday and then they're going to work on this feature and they want to get that one done by Wednesday night. This person on the team, they're working on this feature and blah, blah, blah. And that way there's, there's open communication if there's any questions, misunderstandings and things like that. But if you can get the product team to say like, hey, can we cut back on just a couple of these features because we can't get them all done by Friday. Like there's, just, there's not enough time. You're going to burn everybody out. Um, we need time to enjoy the holidays as well, prepare for holiday time and so on. Um, I, think, I think just having that meeting is, is a step in the right direction. Whether anything comes out of that is is up to the company and up to the business. And if they say, no, we still need to keep all the pressure on, okay, but at least your team knows that you're willing to kind of take that step. They might listen to the CTO. I mean, I mean, if they don't care for your opinion, that's fine. But like, call, call the meet, like have your CTO schedule that meeting with them and bring your team in into that meeting so that the CTO is there with your team and say, this is what we're committing to do by Wednesday. Talk to your, talk to your, uh, talk to your CTO about it. See if they'll call that meeting. If nothing happens, at least your team knows, like, this is what we're planning to, to, to work on. But, uh, yeah, good luck. Let me know how that goes. Uh, Madeline of Rivie, good to see you. Thanks for dropping by. Uh, Madeline of Rivie has also got a really cool stream. Uh, let me do a quick cut out there as well. Does some streaming about 100 devs. And uh, I think going through Advent of Code right now. Is that right? Um, but yeah, I've got one resume I want to go through. But I missed some other questions here. So bear with me for a second. Let's scroll back up in, uh, in chat here. Um, Eric Garcia dropped by. What are some good starter IT related roles for a Bachelor of Science, but in electronics and not computer science? It would be a first US based role. So IT related roles for a Bachelor of Science in Electronics, um, I would say probably something in IoT space. If they're, if they're like getting into like building the circuitry and so on, and they're actually like building out hardware, there are companies out there that, that are tech companies that are actually building hardware. Um, hardware is expensive though. Like for a company to build out hardware, that's a huge expense. Um, but if they've got experience in electronics, um, if they do any kind of programming, I would say anything IoT related, but if it's just electronics based, um, I would say, you know, find companies that are doing like hardware devices, uh, especially like security devices, like security dongles. Um, those are, those are re like really in demand. Um, also be a good hardware related thing. Um, yeah, I'd say like any kind of IOT thing, like lights and cameras and, and stuff like that, but it, it depends on what they specialize in, in electronics. Like what, what side of electronics do they really want to get into? Do they want to get into like RF, uh, you know, like radio frequencies where they get into like, you know, uh, cellular modems and cellular transmission of data. There are companies out there that are building like little IOT circuits 
to put like a Raspberry Pi on a cellular network or an Arduino on a cellular network to build like mesh networking and things like that. So it really depends on where they want to specialize. Um, but I would say IoT spaces is a, is a hot one. Uh, security devices are, are really, uh, really hot. Um, those, those are the first two that come to mind from an IT point of view. Um, there are going to be lots of other like hardware gadgets and things like that that aren't really IoT or IT related. Not IoT, but just IT in general. Um, you know, like clocks and, and things like that. Like you can get into, you know, go work for a microwave company and build microwaves. But, um, you know, if they want something that's specifically IT related, I would look into IoT, so Internet of Things. Um, and then um, security. Security is going to be a hot one for a long time. You know, uh, a lot of companies are trying to get away from passwords. Uh, like Google Chrome now has this new like pass key thing built into the browser. Uh, where they're trying to like store things in a more secure way, especially to kind of cross uh, between the browser and mobile devices and things like that, where if you try to log in on a website, it pings your phone, you okay something on your phone, and then it logs you into the website. They're trying to work on those kinds of automations. Um, and so there's, there's going to be hardware involved there. There's also hardware dongles like USB things that you can plug in. Um, and, and I think those are going to be uh, really big big items uh, in the next couple of years, like some sort of hardware device to log you into things. Um, so I would say any kind of those companies, if that's interesting to them. But again, it, it depends on their interest. If they're not interested in those kinds of things, it's going to be a lot harder. Um, but there are a lot of other like consumer-based things like, you know, automated lights and, and things like that. I mean, there's lots and lots of hardware out there. Um, so I would say the first thing they need to do is figure out like what are they interested in and then what can they demonstrate about their skill? Like how can they put together little circuits and, you know, build little YouTube videos or something like that to show like this is what I built, this is how I built it. Um, just put together some little tutorials and then like apply for those jobs from there because then then you're demon like they're able to demonstrate the skill of like this is what I actually designed and this is what I actually built. Um, let's see, did I miss anything else in chat? <clears throat> Thanks, Dota2, for, uh, for chiming in as well um, on, the, on the stuff for Fool Snable. I appreciate that. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. That's pretty much it as far as the questions went. All right, let's, uh, let's go find that resume to review, and then we'll uh, take a look at that. So the intro on this. Hello, I'm Dana. I've received conflicting advice on the best overall structure of my resume. I'm hoping you might take a look. Let me know if there are sections. It might be beneficial to provide more or less clarity or if I should include some sections like a summary on my resume. So they don't specify whether, like what level of, of, uh, of role they're looking for. Um, and so we'll pull this up. Uh, let me double check real quick that they've anonymized. Yep, they have anonymized. We'll see if uh, if other people can find a little Easter egg on the resume, but uh, yeah, we'll dive in on a on a quick resume review here. Um, my clip thing may or may not be working, but we'll try it anyway. All right, so we got a resume review uh, from a person, and uh, they're basically saying like, I've I've had conflicting uh, I've had conflicting input on resume and what sections to include or not include and how to format things, and just wanted another opinion. Everyone's going to have a different opinion. I like to start my resume reviews with a saying that says, opinions are like armpits. Everybody's got a couple. Some of them stink. But I think it's really important to ask a lot of people for advice and then say, this is how I want to build what I build, um, whether it's software or a resume or cover letter or anything. You know, this is how to network with people or this is how to introduce yourself to people or here's how to give a talk. You know, listen to lots of advice. If you only listen to one person's advice, you're going to get a very narrow point of view. Uh, but in this case, this person's asking for my input and they've had input from other people. Um, and so they just want my, my take on it. Uh, they've anonymized their details, which I appreciate. Um, they've got a skills block, professional experience block, education, project work. And then a big chunk of empty space down here at the bottom. So like most resumes, I like to kind of zoom out and, and see like how are they using the overall page. Everything looks really squished here in the middle, to be honest. I think things could be spread out a little bit. Um, just to use up this space here at the bottom, I think you could add a little bit more space in between each of the sections, um, just at a really high level sort of glance. I think the top 
banner part here with your name and your contact info, I think could also be shrunk down a little bit. That would give you more space to kind of vertically space things out uh, in that regard as well. All right, so with that in mind, let's uh, let's dive in a little bit. If anybody spots the uh, the Easter egg, let me know in chat. If you, uh, if you spot it, some of you might be too young to spot the Easter egg, but if you happen to see it, let me know in chat if you see it. Um, let's see, Dota 2 says, uh, I'd be cautious with Agile could be a hot topic, pair programming, um, not many workspaces actually work in pairs. That's true, yeah, um, but we'll, we'll take a look through this. So languages and frameworks, Ruby on Rails, HTML5, CSS, SQL, Postgres, JavaScript, React, Bootstrap, Python, SQLite. Um, I mean, some of these things are not languages or frameworks. Like they're listing, uh, you know, two databases in here. I would probably list those under technologies. Uh, as far as testing, RSpec, PyTest, Minitest, Cypress, I think these are fine. Technologies, nobody cares what editor you use, so take that out. Um, GitHub, Heroku, CircleCI, Travis CI, Jenkins, these are all great to have on here. Uh, professional, agile methodology, team management, pair programming. I think it's okay to put pair programming on here, especially if you've got a couple of years of experience. Um, although in their case, they're a bootcamp grad. Um, they've been working at this, well, they worked at this company for six or seven months. Um, it looks like they're looking for a new role. So, um, so I think we can draw on some of that. One of the things I'm noticing is as I'm, Notice what's happening with the highlighting here as I'm moving my mouse cursor around and kind of dragging across the page, how it's highlighting things in the wrong order. Like when I started dragging through their skill block here and I come down to experience, notice it just highlighted code person, software developer, like their name and their title at the top. And when I come down into here, suddenly it unselects the code person, software developer, and it highlights a bunch of other stuff. This is indicative of like a problem with how this resume actually got formatted. And this can be a problem for actually applying for a job. So what I like to do is control A or command A on the page, highlight all the text. And let's go pull this into just a text editor somewhere. I'm just gonna pull up um, docs.new. Um, I'm just gonna paste this in a Google Doc. This is the order that an applicant tracking system is actually gonna see the content on your resume. So notice it doesn't start with your name or your contact info. You see professional experience, skills, and then your name, and then your title, and then Turing School of Software and Design, 10-month program, et cetera. And then under education, it's going to see testing and technologies, and then your languages and frameworks. Um, and then it's going to show them your contact information and so on. And so whatever built your resume, is is ruining your chances of applying for a job. So that's the first input I can give you here, is whatever built your resume, you need to stop using that tool because uh, applicant tracking systems, when it parses the text out of that PDF file, this is what it's seeing. And it's not putting it together properly. And so if it's going through and trying to parse out where did you work at which job, which project did you build? What technologies do you know? It's, it's actually scattered all over the place here. So that would be the first thing I would fix is pull that resume into some other tool and re rebuild and reformat your resume because whatever built this is, is hurting your chances of even getting an interview. That would be the first thing I would, I would do. Um, the next thing I would do so having, having glanced at the resume and seeing what's on here first, um, you've got professional experience where you're listing null signal games. You're listing Turing as professional experience, which it is not. It is education because you list it here as education. So get it out of your experience. You didn't actually work at the school. It was project-based learning. It needs to not be professional experience. You did not get paid by the school. Um, so I would, I would remove that as professional experience. This other work here, it's important to show that you were professionally employed. You've got a history of being an employee for a couple of years uh, doing these things, but it's not technical experience. Null signal games is technical experience. 
And this is like development, like professional development experience. So I think I would probably separate this experience into two different chunks of technical experience and then other professional experience. Um, but because you only had six or seven months of experience here, I would probably move your project work up above your experience because it's still going to be important for people to see your project work and not bury it down here at the bottom. So I would reformat the order of these things. I would go skills, projects, professional technical experience, other experience, and then put education down at the bottom in this case. Uh, actually, no, I would change that up. I would do skills, projects, professional technical experience, education, and then other professional experience. So that's how I would reorganize these sections. Um, so if I were to come over here, um, I would have your, your contact info, and then I would do skills, I would do projects, I would do your uh, professional technical experience, and then in your case, I would do education, and then I would do like other professional experience. Here's why. So your contact info always has to be at the top. Skills and projects are going to be the most vital things on your particular resume because you've only got six or seven months worth of work. Um, so companies are still going to want to see your projects. But when they come here and they go, okay, well, you only worked for a little while. What else have you done? Because none of this is going to count as technical experience. They're going to skip everything else on the page and come down here and look at your project work down here at the bottom. But again, highlighting all this stuff is like getting really janky here. So I would, I would build out your projects and then do professional technical experience where you're, where you're building out null signal games. And then I would do education where you're showing this is where I learned my development skills and then list these other non-technical jobs. Again, sorry that the highlighting is going all over the place, but that's, that's an artifact of what built your resume. Um, that would be how I would reorder things. Because as a, as a hiring manager, I want to know what do you know and how have you used it? How have you used those technical skills? And this is what's going to demonstrate the, the actual skill of uh, like how you've actually used these skills. From there, because you don't have a lot of professional technical experience, they're going to want to see where you learned your technical experience. So that's why I would put education next. And then the rest of the stuff is is good to have on the resume to show that you've been professionally employed you've had other roles of responsibility but they're not technical so they need to be at the bottom but i think once you redesign and reformat that you're probably not going to have room for a summary which is fine i generally tell people don't put a summary on the resume anyway um i i tell people as much as possible try to try to build a um try to build a cover letter the summary I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of a neat way to sort of summarize like this is who you are, but that summary needs to be customized for the job to which you're applying because really at the end of the day, you want to sell them on this is the value I bring to your company. And so that summary needs to change from company to company. Like what is that company going to care about? Like what are you telling them that they're going to care about? You don't want to just say like I'm a hard worker and I'm a great problem solver. It's like, all right, that doesn't mean anything to anybody. Why should I specifically keep reading your resume? Like hook me into something about like the project that you built that is highly aligned with what my business does. That's going to hook me in. That would be a good summary statement. But um, I think you've got, you've got enough content on the page here that by the time you kind of spread it out and so on, I think you're not going to need a summary on here. Again, I think you can compact your contact info. This whole banner up here at the top is quite large. You're taking up a lot of room. I would get rid of these, uh, this, this vertical line at a minimum. Um, I think these other ones are fine. I would probably make these lines a little thinner, though. They're really thick uh, on here, and I think it, it's going to draw attention away from things. Um, also, from a margin point of view, uh, the dates here, um, it looks like this date actually has like a space at the end. Same with this one. They don't seem to quite be on the same border or, or margin as this date and this date. So just making sure all those things line up. Same thing with 2017. It also seems to maybe have like a trailing space here at the end. We don't see it on the PDF, but 
visually looking at it, it looks kind of jagged where they're not all perfectly lined up. So just making sure that those details are, are in place here. Um, so let's dive in and actually look at more of the content. So we already talked about languages and framework, get the databases out of here, move the databases down to the technologies section, get rid of VS code. Nobody cares what editor you use. Uh, keep the testing on there. I think that that's fine. Now, in this case, if you're applying for a Ruby on Rails job, this is fine. If you're going to apply for a Python job, put Python at the beginning of the list, put PyTest at the beginning of the list, any other technologies and so on that you've used with Python, put that at the beginning of the list, because you want to look like a Python developer that happens to know all these other things. Same thing if you're going to apply for a JavaScript job, put JavaScript at the front of the line, uh, because right now you look like a Rails developer, and that's the only thing that you're qualified to do. Um, so that, that would be how, like, you want to rearrange those skills based on what's important to the company where you're applying for a job. Uh, I like keeping testing on here. I think that that's fine. Other technologies we already kind of talked about, these, these are all good things to have on here. Um, if you have other deployment uh, targets other than Heroku, because Heroku got rid of their, uh, their free hosting, um, if you have deployed things to any other kind of platform, list those on here as well. Pair programming, it's not a, it's not a bad thing. Uh, we had a, a comment in chat about like, oh, not a lot of companies do pair programming, but I think it's still important uh, as a skill. It shows that you can, you know, immediately work with another person, do code reviews, talk about QA, talk about things that uh, would impact performance, making sure that, uh, that, you know, all your bases are covered and things like that. I think that that's okay to keep on there. Agile methodology, this is something they actually teach at Turing as far as like sprint planning and, and stuff like that. So I think that that's okay to keep on there as well. Um, Dota 2 has also been uh, giving a lot of uh, help in chat up here as well, kind of uh, as we go. And I'll, I'll go through and, and uh, recap some of their feedback here in a moment. Uh, professional experience. So Null Signal Games maintained servers for Netrunner DB by updating production team as issues arose and triaged bugs. Um, so this tells me a little bit about what you did, but it's really high level. Like you don't go into a lot of detail about what you actually did. So maintaining the servers, like what did that actually mean? Like, were you doing system administration? Were you deploying Docker containers? Like, tell me a little bit more about what it meant to maintain a server. Were you physically like manipulating the machines and like swapping out hard drives and, and RAM modules and things like that? Um, and then updating the production team as issues arose. Um, because this also sounds a little bit odd. You maintain servers by updating a team about issues. Um, like maintaining a server, like when I, when I read that, I'm thinking like, oh, you were actually doing like system administration uh, where you're taking care of the physical machine or the virtual machine. But here you're, this is more of a communication thing where you're updating a production team about issues and triaging bugs and things like that. But triaging bugs doesn't really sound like you're maintaining servers. Triaging bugs is like, oh, we found a problem in the software. But again, that doesn't really play back into the idea of system administration here. So I think this first bullet point is a little bit confusing as far as like what you're trying to explain here. Um, updated production environments with delivery of code through Heroku and test automation. Okay, so this is a really convoluted way of saying I help deploy code. Um, I think this could literally be shortened to deployed code to Heroku, um, using test automation through circle CI. Don't, don't make the wording any more complicated than it needs to be. Um, people want to be able to read this and figure out in a hurry, are you qualified for the job that we're doing? Um, and so you need to make that as succinct as possible. Don't, don't add filler words when you can explain something simply, explain it as simple as possible. Um, all right. And then Turing again, get that out of here. It's not professional experience. You didn't, you weren't employed by the school. So get that out of here. If you need to explain, uh, you know, it was a 10 month program or whatever. I mean, you've already got that down here. Um, it's actually word for word copy. So get this off of here. It's not professional experience. It's project based learning. So it doesn't belong here. We already talked about putting this other stuff down at the bottom. Uh, assisted in screening, hiring, and placement of candidates, join the team, develop, maintain training material. For so these are great bullet points. I would love to see some quantifiable information in here as well. Um, how many people did you screen and hire? 
Um, how many pieces of training material did you make? Um, you know, how was it used? How often was it used? Uh, things like that. So you worked there for a little over a year. I would love to see some, some, uh, some quantifiable information and stats about some of that as well. Uh, American Red Cross facilitated emergency communication between deployed service members and families to seek emergency leave for deployed service members. So you, you already mentioned deployed service members. Um, and so again, that's, it's redundant, but it would be nice if you could get that bullet point down to one line. So facilitated emergency communications between deployed service members and families to seek emergency leave. Um, I would just say facilitated emergency communications or deployed service members and family. Um, or facilitated emergency communication for emergency leave for deployed service members and families or something. Like, see if you can shorten that down to one line instead of wrapping this because the, the words that wrapped are also duplicate words. So try to reduce that as much as possible. Created and maintained budgets of, created and maintained budgets of clients, was it for clients? For purposes of obtaining loans and grants from federal aid societies. Um, created and maintained budgets of clients for purposes of obtaining, okay. Um, Mercy Medical Center, coordinated patient schedules, documented, organized, and maintained sensitive medical information, um, provided outreach to patients and intermediaries on behalf of breast cancer care for community fundraising events. Yep, these are, these are good bullet points. Again, if you can kind of quantify like how much of that stuff you did, again, you were there. So this job was only like seven or eight months. This job was two years. This job was, and there, there was a little bit of a gap in between these two jobs, but no one's going to, no one's going to blink at that. That's no big deal. Uh, but this job was a little over a year and then you went into turning from there. So yeah, overall the, the non-professional experience did a pretty good job on here. Again, I would love to see some quantified information on, on these bullet points, but, uh, generally these bullet points are, are pretty good. Education, uh, again, this is fine. I think a lot of companies are going to want to see a date of when you finished the education because you're going through and you're learning software design and so on. But like, how long ago was it? Was it recent or, you know, did you learn that like five years ago? Because if you learned it five years ago and you've only got a little bit of experience, then that's sort of incongruent with uh, um, like how recently did you learn this information? So I would love to just... Put the put the finish date. You finished in January 2022. Just put January 2022 on here. Um, University of Massachusetts, Bachelor of Arts, major in English Lit. You know, put the put the month and year that you finished on that as well. From a project work again, we talked about putting that project work up above. Project scope time. Putting that into hours is a more interesting thing for me to see as a hiring manager than saying this project took two weeks. Um, knowing how many hours you actually spend on it is kind of interesting. It, it kind of provides a little more perspective on how long this project actually took you. Um, so Tiki Arte created application that provides an OAuth secured platform with authorization for users to store. All right, so I like to start projects with the user empathy statement. Like what is this project all about? Users can store and share artwork using an application that provides OAuth secured you know, auth uh, authorization, authentication, or something like that. Like, show me that you've got empathy for the user. Show me that you understand why you built something for somebody. Um, instead of like, you know, I created an application. Well, of course you did. It's your project work. So these words can be taken off. Again, you want to try and shorten this, make it succinct, uh, make it as compact as possible to kind of get the point across of like, this is what we built. Users can store and share artwork. Uh, utilizing OAuth login with Google. Uh, you know, you're showing Google OAuth down here, but uh, Ruby on Rails, RSpec, Google Auth, Faraday, Figaro, Postgres. Yep, these are all good texts. Um, get, the, get the period off the end of these lines. Um, this isn't a sentence, and so you don't need to end this line with a period. Um, project Pre-Kinder. I would also love to see a link to the project if possible, um, either a GitHub repo or preferably a live uh, thing. If it's a backend uh, sort of application that you built like an API, um, if you can put like build a, a Postman collection or something and link to that or, you know, uh, link to that within the GitHub repo. But I'd love to at least see a GitHub repo on these. 
um, so that I can actually go take a look at, at all of this without having to go up here and actually click on your, uh, uh, your actual GitHub link and, and try to find it from there. Show me, show me a link to it here. Um, you've got four projects on here, which I think is, is uh, pretty good for your level of experience and so on. Uh, Create an app that facilitates communication between authorized parents and teachers to organize classroom information. Facil okay, so this second point here, I would make a second bullet point. Don't link it in with the first one. Uh, facilitated flow of information from remote API endpoints and built database for purpose of exposing to the front end team. So the grammar on this isn't great, um, but again, you're being overly wordy with this. You can just say pulled information from you know back end uh, remote APIs to provide to the front end team or something like that. Like you can you can make this easier to read for people. Um, and also getting the point across of like what it was that you did. Escape the house, created the back end of a JavaScript and React based game that tracks scores and achievements in Ruby on Rails. So you're starting with the words JavaScript and React, but really you did it in React or Ruby on Rails. Um, but the technologies that you use, you talk about Python. So which is it? Did you build a Rails project or did you build a Python project? So right away, this is like, huh? This looks weird. Um, so again, I wouldn't even mention JavaScript and React. I would just say, created the back end for a front end team designing a game that tracks scores and achievements. And then figure out like which technology did you actually use? Did you actually do Ruby on Rails or did you do Python? Um, viewing party, again, take, take out the words created an application. Like of course you did, it's a project. So you don't need to tell me that. Um, allows authenticated users to explore movie options and create a viewing party. That's really all you need for, uh, for that user empathy statement. But that, that would make a good user empathy statement. Users can create viewing parties with friends uh, and explore movie options and so on. Um, observed fundamental programming principles such as TDD. So yeah, I think, I think this is fine to list in here is like this was a goal of like learning how to build this project, but put that as a second bullet point. Don't, don't link don't link multiple thoughts on a single bullet point. Ruby on Rails, our spec, VCR with web mock, factory bot, Faraday. Yep. So these are all fine. Um, cool. Let's, uh, let's go back through some of Dota 2's questions. I think I can answer some of these. Um, all right. So Dota 2 is asking, with this person being so new, is it better or worse to give examples of their work? Um, I think it's, it's important to be able to show like, here's the GitHub repo, um, you know, whether they build out a portfolio site, I think for, for a backend developer, I don't think it's as important to build a portfolio site, uh, for a front end, uh, for a front end developer, I would definitely want to see a portfolio for a backend developer, just having a GitHub repo where I can go through and I can kind of see what they've built. But again, if they can build a portfolio page of some kind saying like, here's a button to go run my API in Postman or something like that, uh, where I can actually like interact with that API. If you've got that deployed on Heroku or wherever, um, it shows that you, you know, you've got the deployment shops, which you talk about at, at this job at Null Signal Games, you know how to deploy things to Heroku. So get your APIs up on Heroku as well. Give me links to those that I can, you know, kind of tinker with them in Postman. Uh, you know, that would be, that would be fantastic. And I'm not just promoting that because I work at Postman. I'm saying it's a really good way to show off what you can do as an API developer. Um, I think that's worth doing. Um, I think the tracks, I think that tracks work they do in Ruby on Rails and they wrote it in Python. Um, so Dota, that project is, it's confusing because they say that they built this thing in Ruby on Rails, but then the tech that they actually used was Python. So that's a little bit confusing for me as a reader going, which is it? Did you build it in Ruby or did you build it in Python? Because they're listing a lot of Python stuff in here as far as like seeding the database and SQL Alchemy and so on. SQL Alchemy doesn't have a dash in there. Um, and if you are going to mention JavaScript, make sure you're capitalizing the S in JavaScript as well. Um, everything else looked, uh, looked okay from a capitalization point of view. Um, but yeah, I would, I would fix up those projects a little bit based on uh, what I mentioned there. And then again, the order that, that I talked about. And I think just, you know, shrinking down your, your contact block here at the top. Um, see what else Dota 2 had to say. Um, 
Dota says, definitely keep Red Cross because it was two years of experience. Yep, the medical stuff. If you're not applying for stuff in med tech roles, I'd remove the 2016, 2017 work in favor of more about the tech you know in the projects. So that's a, that's a good point, Dota 2. Uh, so Dota 2 is suggesting like if you're not applying for a medical role, like maybe take some of the stuff out of here. But it does show a continuity of employment as well. You know, like this, this job was relatively short, but then you stayed for two years. This job was also, uh, you know, a decent amount of time. It was over a year staying there. And so I think it shows like longevity staying at these roles. Um, you're probably going to get questions about why you left this job after seven months and what have you been doing since July? Um, that's definitely going to come up as, as a question. Um, how have you been keeping your skills sharp since then? Um, I would love to actually check out this person's GitHub repo and, and actually see, like, are they still contributing code to some kind of GitHub repo? Are they keeping their skills sharp? Like, what are they what are they working on and building and so on? Um, so looking through some of uh, Dota 2's uh, stuff here as well. Ruby TypeScript Python would be my suggestion as far as, like, writing out uh, what they know. But if they don't know TypeScript, then don't put that on there. Uh, unless you mean like Ruby, JavaScript, Python. But again, it depends on the kind of role. Like if they're looking for a Python role, you wouldn't list, you wouldn't keep Python down here at the very end. If you're looking for a Python role, you want to list that first. And your Python project would be the first thing that, you know, if, if you actually did this in Python, I would be listing this project first. And any other project that you can show them in Python, I would want to see at least two projects on here with Python if you're going to apply for a Python job. Um, and then like pick two other ones in, in Ruby on Rails, like whatever you think is most applicable to, uh, to that company. Um, there were a few things on here that I, I would say, like absolutely keep this kind of stuff on here as far as like organized and maintain sensitive medical documentation. Um, although you're talking about documentation and then documentation. Um, but, you know, having, having this on the resumes is, is really critical, like data sensitivity is is almost something that you could list as a as a skill um not just by itself but it's it's a really good skill to have like knowing like hipaa law and, and things like that like what you can uh like how you need to store data and how that data is is tracked and processed and things like that i think is, is going to be uh, really important uh dota 2 also brought up a good point um are you a software developer or are you doing devops um, this role feels like you did a little more on the DevOps side of it, but you're calling yourself a software developer. So this is kind of a pivot point of like, where do you want to spend your time? Are you a developer? Are you, do you want to get into DevOps? Did you realize you didn't like DevOps after all, and you really want to get into development work? These are all considerations that you're going to need here as well. Cool. Dota 2, appreciate your, uh, your feedback as I went through on the uh, resume review here as well. Thank you so much. Cool. All right. Well, there's our resume review for the day. Again, any of the resume reviews that come in, uh, we'll be doing uh, we'll be doing those on Sundays going forward uh, in 2023. Um, so for those dropping by, I'm going to be changing up the stream a little bit. On uh, man, those lights get super bright again. Need to figure that out with uh, with the nano leaf uh, stuff. Um, but yeah, we're going to be we're going to be changing up the stream format a little bit. Sunday is still going to be interview prep, career prep, resume reviews, having guests on the stream. Thursday night is going to be a little more like diving in on the technology side of it, doing some coding, but also dabbling in like 3D printing and how I process things and, uh, you know, 3D design that I do, how I'm doing like painting models and things like that, but also like building out other electronics and stuff. Um, so, yeah, we'll be getting to that on Thursdays. Um, aside from that, we got our donation done for the year for our fundraiser. Uh, so appreciate everybody's help on that. Um, Let's see, what else? I think that was it. Cool, we've been going for about two hours. Um, I promised the kids I was gonna take them out today. Um, so we're gonna uh, go take care of that, take care of some uh, some errands and stuff like that for the day. Um, but yeah, hope everybody has really safe holiday season. Um, if you celebrate the holidays, happy holidays to you. If you celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas and so on. Um, we're going to go out and do some uh, Christmas shopping, I think, and uh, finish up uh, some of our gifts. And we got some 3D prints to finish processing. Got to get, uh, got to get like the uh, support stuff taken off of our flexible axolotl here and uh, take care of some of that stuff. 
But yeah, I'm going to be spending, um, we'll spend more time in the new year uh, going through talking about some of this kind of stuff. Um, just because it's it's fun and interesting to me. And I think until the industry improves a little bit, um, I think we're, we're going to see like a lot more challenges about finding jobs and so on. Um, I've, I've seen more and more things in the news about, um, was it Amazon? They just decided that every student that they said were hiring, they just pushed all of their start dates out by like six or eight months or something like that. So it's like, you still have the job, but you're not starting as soon as you thought you were. Um, so like, what are people going to do for six to eight months? You know, how are they, how are they going to live? You know, they finished school and now they're going to be struggling as students to, uh, to try to do everything that they need to do. So it was disappointing to see that they were, uh, that they were, uh, you know, delaying people's start dates, especially students that are on like student visas, you know, that now have to get work visas and things like that. And is it going to jeopardize being in the United States if, uh, if you delay their start time or their start date? So those, those kinds of things are, are really impacting the industry a little bit. Um, and uh, yeah, I definitely think that, that a lot of this is going to play out into 2023. It'd be interesting to kind of see where it goes. Um, but uh, changing up the, the format of the stream and the kinds of stuff that I want to cover on the stream isn't, isn't really a, like, it's, it's interesting timing, but it's not meant to be a reaction to what's going on in the industry and say, well, it's harder to find a job. So I'm just going to stream less about like the job hunt. Um, that's not it at all. I absolutely still want to be here and help people out and, and, uh, you know, talk about job hunt and resumes and, and what I think makes a good resume and how to sort of stand out and doing company research and things like that, because I still very much believe that doing research on companies and networking with people is absolutely going to find you a job faster than just cold applying to jobs. Um, but if you are going to cold apply to jobs, you have to st you have to really figure out how you're going to stand out as a candidate compared to everybody else applying for these jobs. Um, and that's going to start with your projects and it's going to start with, um, you know, how you're communicating the value that you bring to a company. And so if you are not going to network, then you're going to have to do a lot more on the project side of things, uh, to really stand out. But it's, you're also going to be competing against people who are networking and have people in the company making referrals and recommendations and all that kind of stuff. So I think it's going to be harder for you to find a job in 2023, unless you're really paying attention to networking. Um, and how all of that stuff plays out. And you can go back and you can check out my YouTube archive on uh, some of the playlists on how to do networking, how to do that company research. All those videos are done um, and they're up on, on YouTube in lots of different playlists and so on. Uh, again, early 2023, we'll be rebuilding the website um, and I'll be, uh, I'll be doing some of that stuff Thursday nights and showing people how I'm going to organize that, that information. Uh, we'll be pulling out YouTube videos and things like that. And I would love as much input as possible from folks on the overall like UI and, and flow of, of what goes on on the webpage and especially with the newsletters. Um, if you are subscribing to the newsletter or the email series, um, if you can give me any kind of feedback on the whole sign up process or the resubscribe process, um, things like that, or just going in and maintaining um, like how you subscribe and when you have your start time and setting up the timing between messages and, and all that kind of stuff. If, if uh, anybody's got any kind of feedback on that, I would love to hear the feedback on those. Um, so if you want to go check out the, uh, the email newsletters, here's a link to it. Um, you're absolutely welcome to subscribe. Um, I'm going to be doing more giveaways in 2023 as well. Um, and they'll probably be 3D printed related things. Um, and uh, those giveaways, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, how I want to do those giveaways. Uh, my giveaways are never going to be just for subscribers and things like that that you have to pay for. That's never going to be uh, something that I can do, you know, partly for legality, but partly just for an inclusivity uh, point of view. You don't want to exclude people by making something a, a paid only kind of feature. Um, but some of the things that I want to do, for example, is I might do a giveaway only to people who are subscribed to my newsletter, uh, you know, or, or, you know, you've got to be subscribed to two of my newsletters on a certain date or something like that to, to qualify for a giveaway or something like that. I do want to draw more attention to the newsletters. Uh, I spent a lot of time, you know, building out that content and I want to make sure that, uh, that that's as helpful as possible to people, but also, you know, that people are sharing that information as well and saying, Hey, I found this newsletter. You should check it out. Um, so I want to, I want to do that as much as possible. So, um, 
Let's see, Dota 2 is also saying some stuff here in chat. Let me go back and take a look at that. Um, big tech are making changes in hiring. Yep, for sure, especially current roles. Uh, I'm not preparing for an interview. <laughs> yeah. Daily is a lot of email. Well, you don't have to get a daily. That's the thing with my with my newsletter. You can go in and you can say, I want this newsletter every three days. I want this newsletter every seven days. You can go in and you can set how frequently you want to get the messages. That was part of what I wanted to build into the subscription uh, set up there is that you can choose how frequently to get the messages. So you don't have to get a daily anymore. You can go in and say, of the three newsletters, I want them at this pace. And then it'll only send them out on those dates. And you can also put it on pause and say like, hey, I want to get the next message January 1st. And so you won't get any email until January 1st. That'll be when you get the next message. Um, so I wanted to give people control over uh, like how frequently they get the messages or when they get the messages. So um, any kind of feedback around that would be really fantastic. Um, one thing that um, that happens right now, for example, when you when you load up one of the newsletters in your email client down at the bottom, there's a link to manage the subscription. When that loads the page, it loads the same page that you see when you first subscribe. Um, but it takes a minute to go, oh, let me go get your email address and which newsletters, and then it populates that page. I would love to have some kind of animation on there or ghost everything out until it actually loads that information. Again, those are improvements that I want to make in 2023. Because right now, when you click that link, it takes two or three seconds to actually populate the page. And when it first loads up, you're like, wait, there's no information on here. Do I need to type this in? And then it populates because it's doing it as a background fetch and it's, you know, it's got to go to the API and it's got to pull all this information, format it and populate the page. But I want some kind of spinner animation or something on there, like loading your data or something, or like ghost out the page that you can't actually interact until it actually loads and then do something from there. Um, same thing as when you actually say like, I want to subscribe or unsubscribe and you hit the save button at the bottom, like nothing happens. Like there's no animation saying, Hey, we're working on it. I tried to build a little spinner animation in there, but it doesn't work. Um, and I'm not great at front end. So, uh, you know, that that'll be something that I want to do on a Thursday night where I say like, hey, come help me fix this kind of stuff. Like I want that interaction to be better. So, uh, the subject, I don't know if branding a difference would change things. Again, I'm not. Um, so tech interviews only captures people. It's hopefully a brief period of time in comparison to working. Yes and no. Um, some people are taking a long time to find a job. And so. Um, you know, I know people that have been job hunting for a year, year and a half. Um, but at the same time, I can give, I can give the advice. You have to follow the advice. If you're not following the advice, then, you know, that's kind of on you. Um, I was talking in my, in my last stream about how it's disappointing as a mentor to have somebody come to you and say, Hey, I need help finding a job. And you take time and you invest time and you kind of lay out a plan and say, this is what I think you should do to get a job. And you give them steps to follow and you, and then you watch them actively not do those steps and you reach out and go, Hey, like, you're not doing this thing. Like, I thought we talked about this. You were going to do this thing. And they're like, yeah, well, you know, I kind of procrastinated. It's like, you're holding up your own job hunt. Like you're making it slower for you to get a job. Um, and at some point I'm going to say like, Hey, if you don't start following these steps in the next month or two, like I'm going to drop you as a mentee because if you're not going to follow my advice, then why are we having, you know, these conversations? Why are we checking in every couple of weeks if you're not doing the work? Like you're, you're not that you're wasting my time, but like, you know, if you're not going to do the work, then why am I, why am I sharing this knowledge with you? I've given you the steps. You're not following the steps. So, um, you know, just setting good boundaries on that kind of stuff. But it's, I, I kind of talked about that last, uh, last stream. Anyway, we've been going about two hours here, so I think we're going to uh, take a break. And uh, like I said, we've got some other uh, stuff that we want to do as a family. So I'm going to go uh, find somebody that we can raid. Who can we go raid? Who's new? Who haven't we raided in a while? Let's see, we've got some game development going on. Um we got some Angular code going on. Really small stream. Angular cookbook. Got some people working on Rust. Got some people working on C++. Got lots of people working on like digital assets and game development, things like that. Uh, let's see, who else can we go find? Anybody has got uh, suggestions for a raid target, uh, feel free to drop that in chat as well. 
Um, that person just started streaming. Someone actively building some code. Who should we go raid? Uh, Astro Canuck. Yeah, I was just looking at Astro Canuck. Um, oh, looking back at chat. Um, I wonder if side projects or something would be better. Not sure what uh, what context you mean that in Dota 2. Uh, tech interviews only capture what people are doing. I wonder if side projects or something similar would be better. I'm not sure what the context of the side project and being better would be about Dota 2. If you want to expand on that, I'd love to uh, love to chat about that a bit more. Uh, what I'm trying to get at, the interview part is only half the battle, building the skills as well. Yeah. Um, and, and that's part of like what I want to sort of rebuild about the website is like, here's the whole journey. Like here are all the different steps of the journey. And then, you know, for each of those steps, like here are things that you can go do. And just taking the the stuff that I talk about on the stream and taking the YouTube videos and the playlists and things like that and kind of dropping those on those pages around like, what kinds of projects should I build? Well, I've, I've answered that question a ton of times on YouTube. Um, and so like putting those videos on, uh, on those web pages would be, I think would be helpful so that people aren't just reading it, but there's actual video content on there as well. Um, but then also turning that into the whole preparation newsletter as well. Because right now we've got uh, technical questions, behavioral questions, and just general topics about like, what should you expect in a technical interview? Like what's that whole process going to look like? Um, so I've got those three newsletters and I want to make a fourth newsletter about just the preparation side of it. Like what kinds of projects should you be building? How should you format a resume? Like why should you format it in a particular way? And being able to expand on those ideas a little bit more like similar to the resume review today, I think that covered a lot of the points about like why I would want to see a resume in a particular format. But again, that's just my opinion. You know, you need to go listen to lots of opinions on this stuff and, and form your own plan of like, this is what I want to do. Um, but then like taking the steps, like this one mentee that I've got in mind, like taking the steps that I've, I've outlined to them and that I've outlined on the, on the stream here several times too about go start a project, be blogging about it. And, you know, like actively asking people like, Hey, can you go in and like that thing? So it'll show up in more people's news feeds and whatever, and it'll bring more discovery and awareness to who you are as a developer and things like that. Um, those are things that I want to, uh, you know, expand on and like put on the web page for people. Asked a friend, how do you get contract work? He replied, well, if you can build a house, someone will hire you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but they have to be able to see the house that you built and they have to see the merit of what you built and why you built it a particular way. But just because you know how to build a particular kind of house doesn't necessarily know, mean that you know how to architect the kind of house that I want you to build. Um, and so there's, there's a lot of sort of give and take on those kinds of things. And I think being able to adequately describe what you can build and why you can build things a particular way, I think is, is really helpful. Um, not just here's a, here's a, portfolio of my projects but these are you know this is why i build things a particular way i think that kind of stuff is is helpful as well um so astro connect right now is building lego um it's not typically what i would rate into um i do like to support other people that are building tech um and doing some kind of coding especially uh you know like around my whole theme of diversity in tech um, and so I think I'm going to go right into this channel. We've never raided into them before. I've only just started following them recently, um, but they're doing some Angular work right now. So I think we're going to go right into their channel and uh, go give them a little bit of support as well. So we're going to go raid over to Code with Hassan. Um, so we'll see everybody over there. Um, say hi in chat. Be friendly, please. And uh, we'll catch you in the new year. So happy holidays to everybody. Happy new year. We'll catch you in January. I'll get that schedule up on the webpage in a little while. Um, sometime over the holidays, I'll, I'll publish like the full schedule that I'm planning to do for January and what the topics are going to be for each of those. And uh, I'll definitely be doing more live coding through the day also on this channel. And again, anytime I'm streaming, you're always welcome to ask for interview tips and advice and, and things like that. I'll always pause what I'm doing for that.
Cool. Let's uh, let's head over to Asan's channel and we'll catch you over there. Uh, have a good rest of your weekend um, and have a good week. Um, and then, uh, Will Snable, if you're still in chat, uh, let me know how that conversation goes this week with your team. All right. Take care, everyone. Cheers.